tonight, you will get that chance. As this is game number two in the best of three preliminary round series between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Los Angeles Kings. Many people think tonight will mark the last game of this season for the Kings, who were soundly whipped in game number one at Maple Leaf Gardens. George Ferguson scoring three times in the third period to tie a Stanley Cup playoff record as the Leafs won handily 7-3. to three. We go inside in a moment to the home of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and the L.A. Lakers, the Los Angeles Kings, Jack Kent Cook's fabulous forum as we welcome you again to Hollywood. Be an actor, see Mr. Factor, you make your kisser look good. Go out and try your luck, you may be gone dead. Hooray for Hollywood. Welcome again to the Forum. I'm Dave Hodge, and we're pleased to have again with us on tonight's second game telecast, Lou Nanny of the Minnesota North Stars to give us his look inside the playoffs, and as usual, in the broadcast booth, Bill Hewitt and Brian McFarland. Although the first game was well in hand for the Maple Leafs after two periods, they held a 4 to nothing lead. The story of the game occurred in the third period when the Leafs built their margin to seven goals, 6 nothing at one point. George Ferguson was the story as Ferguson tied the Stanley Cup playoff record. Only seven goals in the regular season. He gets three in one period of a playoff game. The first came early in the third period. Ron Ellis's rebound was left by Rose. Ron Ferguson scores at 218 of the third period. He scores his second goal at the 448 mark. A big rebound by Vachon. Ferguson is able to get to it. The Los Angeles defensive play was sloppy all night. Then came the record tying goal and the hat trick goal for George Ferguson. He moves in from a bad angle and uh, this slipped by Rogi Vashon too, making it a bad night for the Kings goalie and a great one for the Maple Leafs center. The question tonight is can the Kings combat the Leafs aggressiveness? Many people think that the Leafs have too much muscle for the Kings. That's going to be how tonight's game is decided, many people feel. Elsewhere in Stanley Cup playoff action, we bring you uh, what will be a surprise to some from Madison Square Garden. Don Murdoch in overtime at the 137 mark wins it for the Rangers over the Buffalo Sabres 4 to 3 to cause a third game in that series at Buffalo on Saturday night. And this will be a mild surprise to some. Detroit eliminating Atlanta. Certainly a surprise that the Wings were able to do it in two straight games. Bill LaHead scored twice, the winner late in the third period, Red Wings in two over Atlanta, and the Colorado Rockies continue to give the Philadelphia Flyers fits. That game is 1-1 at Denver in the second period. That's the latest score we had from the Mile High City. Back to this game, Rogi Vashon did not play well, and he knows it, and the Kings realize that they must have better goaltending tonight. The Leafs were happy with Mike Palmatier's work. Not so happy with the two late Los Angeles goals in the third period, but that was a minor annoyance for Roger Nielsen, who was nothing but smiles after the Leafs totally dominated the Kings. The biggest question tonight will be, can Los Angeles Kings centers get moving? Marcel Dion had one shot on Tuesday night. Butch Goring did not have a shot, nor did Silaps. Dion was well tied up by Jimmy Jones. Obviously, Goring and Silaps were nullified. The Leafs play down the middle, led by Jimmy Jones on Dion, led by Ferguson with his three goals. Also, Stan Weir with a goal and the usual great play of Daryl Sittler was a big factor. And so was the heavy hitting that the Leaf wingers were able to do. The Los Angeles Kings have one well-known tough guy, if you will, Burt Wilson. A lot of people think he has to set the tone for Los Angeles tonight, or the Kings have little chance. Uh, there uh, is close to a sellout crowd, if not 16,005 here at the Forum. They hope to see the Kings play again on Saturday night via television. And we have this one for you. We'll return with our Stanley Cup playoff coverage in just a moment. I'm a music lover, but I'm no engineer. Right, Stanley? Uh -huh. The last time I went shopping for stereo, I was so busy checking out the specifications that I didn't have time to listen to the music. So today, I brought Stanley along. He's an audiophile. Right, Stanley? Uh -huh. He checked out the specs while I concentrated on the music. And we both agreed on Sansui. Beautiful engineering, beautiful music. Sansui. 
There's even music in the name. Right, Stanley? Stanley? Providing their share of the family income makes a lot of sense to a lot of women these days. And so does buying life insurance. Think about your future and talk it over with a Mutual Life of Canada agent. and the Los Angeles Kings in game two of the preliminary round. The Leafs captured the first game, seven to three in Toronto the other night, a one-sided affair. Can they make it two in a row? The Kings will have to bounce back if their season is to be prolonged. And here with the play-by-play, -play, Bill Hewitt. Thank you, Brian, and it's a lot of excitement right here in the forum at this moment as we prepare for the start of the First period, Brian Lewis is the referee, and there's the linesman, Neil Armstrong, and Claude Bichard. Brian Lewis, and there's Mike Palmatier, number 29, We're all set to go. A few exercises, and Rogie Bashan, and play is underway, and the puck is right back to Bashan, right front of the faceoff, back of the net. That's Daryl Edestrand, getting it over to... The right side to Randy Maneri up at center. It's shot down the ice. That's going over the red line. Who gets to it first? And it was touched by the King. So they keep it in there. Peter Semkowski's giving the puck. There's the shot by Edisman. That's why Dan Maloney shoots the puck down the ice. And Edisman has to go back for the Kings. Into the corner. Back of the net. He gets it up on the right side. Cleared out to center. Goes all the way down. Maloney goes back after it. Semkowski bumped into him. The boy is home. He has the puck. Ahead at center right. Stan Weir. Unable to get over the boot line as he was checked at center. Peter Semkowski was hit by Glennie. Comes out over the blue line. A race for the puck. Lanny McDonald. Over the line. Back to Stan Weir. And Lanny McDonald's shot was on the short side. Here's Stan Weir. Coming out in front, right in front of the net. Takes a whack at it, and Rudy Vanshaw pulls it out. Weir is very angry with himself. He, he made a fine move to bring that puck out, and again, the Kings are sloppy in their own zone, allowing the Leafs to come out from behind that net. They did it repeatedly in Toronto the other night, and Rogie Vash I had to be very alert there. The Leafs came close against the Kings netminder, the veteran Rogie Vashon. Darrell Sittler 
with Tiger Williams and Ron Ellis. And you'll be witnessing quite a few changes because the Leafs do not have the change ability they had back at Maple Leaf Gardens. They have to change first. Still apps, number 14, against Sittler. There's a shot by Ellis. Oh! Right by the face off. Ron Ellis whacked it, and it went over the pad into the corner. The Leafs lead it one to nothing. Oh. Ellis from Sittler. We've got to see that again. Sittler got the draw. That was a strange kind of a goal as this crowd sits back in shock silence now as the Leafs draw first blood here. Roger Nielsen switched Sittler with Weir in the first shift. Got him right back out there again, and here's the puck to Ellis. It was kind of a missed shot. He just sort of shoveled the, the puck in the direction of Vashon and went behind him. My goodness, one nothing Leafs. Leafs for the one nothing lead and have the puck back in their own end. Trevor Johansson being watched by Tommy Williams, kept in by Gary Sargent, and intercepted by Trevor Johansson to Daryl Sittler. Up with Williams. Williams takes the pass. Trying to get into the clear. Going right in and go. And Williams, no goal. Was there a whistle as he went down? I don't know why they're disallowing this. The referee, Brian Lewis, well, we'll get an announcement shortly. Williams did a great job, one-handed there. This crowd is in such an uproar, you perhaps can't hear the whistles tonight like we could. Puck did not cross the goal line. Well, let's see. The light went on. There's the play. Oh, it went right along the line. One nothing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Ellis from Sittler at 122. One nothing. Toronto Maple Leafs lead. Puck is into the corner. After it there is Mike Murphy, number seven. Gets it up to center right to Half. Half goes up. Flip the puck into the corner. Up there is Bob Murdoch. Murdoch tried to center it. Palmateer covers up and holds on. Well, the Leafs very nearly had a 2-0 lead as Williams went right around the defense. Hit the post one-handed and the puck went right along the goal line. And the minor officials who are from Vancouver tonight, the light went on. Detroit three, but the Canada. goal, there was ruled no goal because it did not fully cross the line. Overtime to New York Rangers four, Buffalo three. Ready for the face-off in the lead zone to the left. We have Marcel Dion at center now with number 15, Danny Grant, playing on the left wing. Edis Strand and Maneria, the two defensemen. Trying to get set here. Moving over number 18, Dave Taylor. And finally, the face off. The Leafs gets the blue line, but not up an area shot. That is knocked down. The Leafs clear the puck out. A flash, and there's going to be a penalty. A first penalty of the game coming up here. Leafs leading 1-0 on Ellis' goal from Sittler at 1-12. Here's the penalty. Grant for slashing. One fifty-seven. One fifty-seven is the time of the penalty. Darrell Sittler with Lanny McDonald, Annie Maloney, Ian Turnbull, and Boria Salming. Leafs lead 1-0 on a quick goal. Long shot. Palmateer handled that easily. Leaves it for Boria Salming, number 21. Salming to Sittler. Sittler at his own blue line. Up to the red line at center. Up over the blue line again. And he's hit by Ellis Rand. The puck goes into the corner. Ellis Rand then hit by Sittler. Here's a two-on-one for Los Angeles. Demkowski takes the shot. Gloria Salming, a slash, high stick by Ian Turnbull, and I believe the Leafs run into a penalty. Ian Turnbull. 
So that evens them up at five aside. High sticking. 228, the time of the high sticking penalty in Turnbull. And it followed a two on one rush by the Kings with Stemkowski and Bert Wilson racing down, and they very nearly connected. Stemkowski took the shot, and there was a rebound, but very briefly. Marcel Dion out there on the forward line out with Taylor, Gary Sajan, and Bob Murdoch. William with Jimmy Jones, the puck taken by Brian Glennie. Glennie can't get it out, Dion can't get to it. William knocks it to run out. Made by Boria Salming, around on the boards and down the ice. That's going to be icing. And Murdoch will get back and touch it. And Kings obviously came out here tonight, Bill, with uh, in the mood not to be pushed around like they were in Toronto the other night. They've been throwing their weight around tonight. So of the Leafs, Sittler got in a good hit early in the hockey game. Well, and those two scoring opportunities, first the one that Ellis did connect on, and then Tiger Williams missed one. That could have been the hockey game right there had uh, Tiger Williams scored. Puck is played down the ice. Going back to it, picked up, shot by Bashan into the corner, over to the far wing, out over the blue line to center right. Murdoch gets over the line, was bumped. Hello again, everybody. We welcome our viewers in Ontario, Quebec, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba to the fabulous forum. The score, Toronto won, the Los Angeles Kings no score. Goal by Ronnie Ellis. Here's Bill Hewitt. Back for the Kings over the line. Jammed out of the play. Boria Salmi picks it up. They're playing five aside. Boria Salmi to Daryl Sittler. Ron Ellis has opened the score and Sittler was hit by Murdoch. And Salmi went down. They're really starting to hit one another. Goes down the ice. Plenty's got to go back for it. Behind the net for Brian Glenny. Leafs lead it one to nothing. They scored at 1-12. Ellis from Sittler on a faceoff. Here's Sittler coming to center. A long shot. Bashan threw that into the corner. Number seven, Mike Murphy left it in front. Sittler shoots it back because Turnbull is still in the penalty box. And he has 18 seconds as the Kings are back at full strength. A long shot down the ice. Bashan into the corner. Darrell Edis ran. Gets it up. Butch Goring couldn't get anywhere as Salming checked him. Back behind the net for Randy Maneri, number two. Randy Maneri. As Turnbull gets back on the ice. Teams are at full strength. Ian Turnbull. That is old blue line up at center right. Tries to go through. It goes to the corner behind the net. Bennett is back all the way down the ice. Lanny McDonald is wearing a helmet with a mask in this first period. Williams shot it for Lanny McDonald. Up at center. Right over the line. Sam Weir. Lanny McDonald. Lanny McDonald centered it right in front of the net. And it's played by the Kings, but not out. Turnbull kept it in. Shot it around behind the goal. That's out of his net. Up along the board. Puck goes sliding down the ice, and Turnbull has to go back for it. one nothing. Toronto Maple Leafs leading in this first period as we have 14-37 remaining to play. Back of the net. Now then, Gary Sargent up on the right side. A clearing pass for Apps over the blue line. Apps into the corner, trying to center it. Still has it. Gets it back to Sargent. Sargent shot one. Bombardier stopped that. The rebound off the board. Comes back and down the ice. Sargent didn't expect it. And Ab shot it down to his own blue line. Back come the Kings again. Sargent shoots the puck in, and that is offside. Well, just to repeat, one goal so far, that by Ronnie Ellis. From the fabulous form in Los Angeles, this is Stanley Cup 78. 
I got a tale to tell about a special cat. Come on, take a look at Mercury Bobcat. Now this year's Bobcat is really in gear. It has more standard features than it did last year. You can see what we mean when we proudly say it's a lot more Bobcat in every which way. You ought to size one up and go for a spin. You'll find Bobcat's good to be in. It's frisky and peppy and spunky too. It's got DuraGuard protection. It's the one for you. Get one for a song. Mercury Bobcat at the sign of the cat. And we're back to the live action here at the Fabulous Forum as Boya Salming gets the puck, passes it over to Mike Pellick. Pellick shoots the puck in after being hit. The puck goes to Ron Ellis. Ellis, let it go. Lanny McDonald after it. George Ferguson out there. And back behind the net is Glenn Golda. Over onto the right wing, and the Kings come up the center. Golda with a backhand. Here then for Salming. At Ellis couldn't get it after standing in front. Gloria Salming then over for Maloney, Ferguson, and Ellis over the line. Ellis kind of get it to Ferguson. Put it by Pellet back to the net. Ferguson is there in the corner. Knocked it behind the goal. Maloney goes up, ran into F. Mike Pellet keeps the puck in, knocking it behind the net. Wings pour in after the check. And finally Murdoch gets it up the center. Went by Dion, and Salming recovers over to Mike Pellick. Pellick to Jimmy Jones. Jimmy Jones tried to go through, and it was knocked down by Darrell Ennistrad. Long floating shot. Came dangerously close to the front of the net. It does, and it's picked off by Mike Pellick, and he blasts it out to center right. Ennistrad back for it. Made up by Murdoch. Over the line for Danny Grant. He's checked, and Ian Turnbull. Ian Turnbull, four of them. Over the line, losing in. Back to Butler. Butler takes the shot. They're going to rule that Bouquet was in the goal crease. And now Bouquet's in a scrap out there with uh, number 18, Dave Taylor. kinds of things happen here in this first period. The Kings are in a snarly mood tonight. They've been hitting particularly Daryl Edisrand on defense. He's dished out some lovely body checks. One goal scored so far. That by Ron Ellis, his first of the playoffs this year, his 15th in playoff activity overall. At 112 of the first period on a weird kind of a shot right off the faceoff. We'll catch that a little later right now. They've got them separated down there. We'll have additional penalties. That's twice the red light has gone on at the King's end already. Once when Williams left one right on the goal line and they disallowed it. This time with Boutet in the crease, they have apparently disallowed a goal. Tonight's Stanley playoff game is coming to you from the fabulous forum in Los Angeles. Disco Fever. Fever, 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 featuring Miko and Star Wars. Tavares. Must be missing an angel. Donna Summer. In the stores now. Two record set, $6.99. Taper cassette, $7.99. Keep your Saturday Night Fever alive all week long with Disco Fever. Fever, 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 Fever. Fever, 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 Well, here's the goal, first of all, by Ron Ellis. Look at this shot. A lob shot that got in behind Rogie Bash on just caught the inside corner. And now we have the fighting penalties uh, called here. Boutet and Taylor, five minutes for fighting, and Boutet gets an additional roughing penalty. That's a minor. So he gets seven minutes, Taylor gets five. And Jim Gregory just came down the steps beside us, very upset that that goal was disallowed with Boutet called for being in the crease by referee Brian Lewis. Well, that's a, an oddity, two of them in a row. We repeat, the minor officials from Vancouver tonight. 12 minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the first period. Toronto leads one to nothing on Ellis's goal, which you just saw, from Sittler at 112. 
Leafs will be short-handed because Boutet picked up the minor as well as the major. Now so Valakat has to come over to the penalty box and set out the two minutes. Now we're all set to go. Butch Goring at center. They have Bob Murdoch. Gary Sargent. Tommy Williams. And Mike Murphy. And the Kings move to center ice. Stopped by Glennie. Shot over the line. Moria Salome shot it back out again. Sargent knocked it down with his glove. Gary Sargent. Up to Goring over on the wing. And Marcel Dion is out there now. Shot it in. Moria Salming then to the blue line, but not out. Murphy missed it. Ryan Glenny then for Jimmy Jones. He got it out. Gary Sargent at center right. Over to Dion again. Dion trying to pick his way in over the line. He was bumped. Puck goes to Gary Sargent over to Murphy. Murphy to Sargent. Over, shot by Dion, and that was stopped as Salming got in front of it. Gary Sanchez, over for Dion again. Dion back to Sanchez, and that was shot wide on a deflection, and Jimmy Jones has lost his stick. It's broken. Comes back to Sanchez. Over to Dion. Dion getting set. Past it. Comes back. Dion, still with it. Trying to get a man in position. Gary Sanchez to Dion. Dion gets the shot. Palmateer stopped that. Good scoring. Shot it back to the blue line again. Jimmy Jones still hasn't got a hockey stick. Comes over. Lenny fell in front of him. Comes back to Sargent. Over it Tom Sears. The shot. And that's high. And down the eight. Jerry Butler races after it. Butler over the blue line. He's got the clock going right in. Oh, and that's As the league with Jerry Butler knew he got loose. That bad sound made a good save. Ten minutes, 36 seconds to go in the first period. one nothing Toronto. Shot in behind the net, into the corner. Back out on the eighth, Bellicat. So the minor penalty is up. Now here's Ron Ellis. Over to Ferguson. Over the red line. Over the blue line. Trying to cut in. Pass it behind the net. Goes into the corner, Bellicat. Ran into his man, and the puck goes to the far side. Up at center ice for Raps. A long shot, wide of the net. Delicat. Trying to get it out in front. He does. Ferguson is there, and he backhands it out to center ice. Leafs trying to change on the go. Edestrand. Shot it into the Leafs zone. That's going. Stopped by the broken stick. Cleared now by Mike Pellick out the center. Daryl Sittler. Nearly got loose. Buck goes over on the far wing and the King. Up at center. A pass nowhere near App, so it goes to the Leafs. Pellick. Shot it over the line. Darrell at his friend. Let's it go to Rogi Vashaw and we'll have a face off. This is Stanley Cup 78 from the Fabulous Forum in Los Angeles. Tuesday night, it's the Rene Samar Show. Each week, the biggest names in the music industry join forces with Rene Samar. Tuesday night at 8.30, 9 in Newfoundland, here on CBC. In the East tonight, the Rangers won in overtime. 4-3 to three over Buffalo. Murdoch got the winner. There were two goals disallowed. There was a baby born at Madison Square Garden tonight. And Philadelphia won. Colorado won. And here's another final. Detroit over Atlanta. 3-2. to two. Detroit advances into the quarterfinals. All set to go. The puck does not drop fairly. And we'll do it all over again. Oh, that will be joy in Motor City tonight, Bill. They certainly will. There's a shot scored! Lady McDonald! Rifle a quick one from this face-off again, and this leap club is getting deadly from face-off. Well, that's the second time now. That was a much harder shot than 
Ronnie Ellis's uh, goal, but they all count. And now the Leafs lead it two to nothing. As you say, they're winning the faceoffs deep in the King zone. Lanny McDonald wearing that mask to protect the nose, which was cut for stitches the other night. Lanny Drills McDonald. one pass, Rogi Vasha. It's two nothing lead. Sittler gets another assist. He has two points now for the playoffs. Repeating to one goal, number seven, Lanny McDonald. Lanny McDonald. Number 27, Daryl Sittler. Time 10:38. 10:38 is the time of the goal. Two to nothing for the Maple Leafs as they come out again, led by Turnbull. Turnbull with a long shot off the board. Bashaw tipped that behind the net. It goes into the corner. Comes along the boards to the blue line. Semkowski can't get anywhere. Lenny McDonald knocked it back into the corner. Back of the net. Dan Weir goes after it. So does Mahoney. Dan Weir comes up with it. His backhand goes over the glass into the crowd. And this Leaf team has got the King fan bottled up in their own end. Well, it was McDonald and Sittler who didn't get the big points the other night but here's Sittler winning another face off taking his man out of the play and McDonald just finding enough shooting room to drill that one past Rogie. Two to nothing Leafs in front. McDonald gets his first playoff goal. Earlier Ellis got his first. So the Leafs lead it two nothing with eight minutes and 41 seconds to go in the first period. Rogie Vashaw still down on his knees in the goal area. Oh, the Kings really came out hitting. Uh, I didn't really think they could hit all that hard, but they've been bumping and bruising since the first whistle, and the Leafs trying to match them, and perhaps they haven't matched them in uh, bumping, but they've got the goals, and that's where it counts. Got two and missed a couple of others. Butch Goring at center with Tommy Williams and Mike Murphy. The pocket center, Boya Salming kicked at it. It goes back into Leafs territory, and Brian Glennie, number 24. A pass up to Sittler. Sittler with Maloney. Maloney gets the puck. Hits his backhand. That's off the target. It goes to Goring in the corner. Lanny McDonald bumped into him. Murphy's long pass at center. Over the line for Williams. And it's broken up and cleared into the lead bench by Glenny. At 8.13 to play, Butch Goring, number 19, named the Kings MVP. Had career high of 37 goals. A tremendous competitor. But the Leafs held him in check in the first game, as they did Marcel Dion. Dion uh, getting only one shot in goal in the Toronto game. Marcel Dion, Danny Grant. Out on the forward line with Glenn Goldup. Dion tried to get to the puck. Ian Turnbull has it. Gets it out the center ice. It goes by Rob Palmer, and he gets it over to Daryl Edestrand. Edestrand's pass at center, knocked down by Turnbull. Leafs trying to slow the tempo of the game down as they have a 2 0 lead. Jimmy Jones after the puck, turns around, then Williams gets into the corner, and Edison has it behind the net. Edison coming straight down the ice, two center over the red line. A long shot, Palmateer handled that, and he gave it to Trevor Johansson. Trevor Johansson got it to the blue line, but not out. Palmer shot the puck into the corner. Dion has lost his stick. So Williams will bring it out. Dave Williams over the blue line, up at center, long shot into the corner. Rebound off the board to Edison. Picked up there by number 15, Danny Graham. Got this Turnbull a hard fly. Nice save by Dash on that one. Grant is hit again by Jerry Butler. Every Joe Hanson flips it high. How far is it going? Into the corner. Williams is there. Lost the puck. Bob Murdoch, number five at center for the Kings. Long shot. That's shot by Palmateer. Picked up by Gloria Salming. Over it goes. Weir, Ellis, and Pelling. Off Ellis, offside. With the score, Toronto two, and the Kings nothing. This is Stanley Cup 78. It's a shame how heat can make something ugly. So what's a poor devil to do? Remember this, trim-clad heat-resistant enamel can make most anything beautiful again. <laughs> trim-clad does it devilishly well. And we're back live here at the fabulous forum. 
as Ron Ellis gets set to face off with Stan Weir getting the draw for the Leafs. Back to Mike Selleck. Got the puck in. Goes into the corner. That's the sergeant carrying it along the board. Apps is there and they hold it and we'll have another face off. And this is where the circle has been. Stan Weir came out from behind the net in the very first couple of minutes of play tonight and very nearly popped another goal by Vash. I believe had scored on all their opportunities and not had the two disallowed. They'd be leading this by five to nothing. Jack Valakett comes out. Yes, Stan Weir was in cold. And of course, the one hit the post. And Butler's rushed down the wing. Right. And they draw up. Apps. Flips the puck out the center, bounces, Boya Salming drives it off the board. Sergeant hands it to Boya Salming, he's tracked by Apps. Apps gets over the line, trying to get it back, still has it. Drops it back to Murdoch, Murdoch took his shot. Comes back, Harry Sergeant right on Ellis' stick. Up to Valakat, back to Ellis. Ellis, couldn't get his shot away. Gets the puck again though. And lost it to Murdoch. Now Murdoch, number five, coming to center. Coming to the leaf line. Passed it over. And it's cleared by Boria Salmi to the board. Goring couldn't keep it in. It's knocked out to center right. Murdoch drives the puck in. And it's called offside by Claude Bechard. This Stanley Cup playoff is coming to you from the fabulous forum in Los Angeles. Hey there with that booming shot. Grow with us. Hey there making that big stop. Grow with us. Scotia Bank Hockey College, where kids get playing tips and news from the experts and learn the good things about saving right now. No membership fee. Just open a high interest Scotia Bank Hockey College savings account. Hockey College, only at Scotia Bank. Come to Scotia Bank and grow with us. 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 back as you can see live from Los Angeles Daryl Sittler, Lanny McDonald and Dan Maloney along with Trevor Johansson and Ian Turnbull. Toronto Maple Leafs are leading 2-0 with 544 remaining in the first period and it's Ian Turnbull. Turnbull's pass for Johansson. Johansson bumped with Tommy Williams. Goring goes after Johansson and Scott Murphy stopped it. It's knocked out and down over into L.A. territory. Lanny McDonald was jammed. And Maloney goes after the puck. Oh. And up. Maloney had his man down on the ice. That's Randy Maneri. Hanson playing some of the best hockey of his career late in his uh, first season. And he's been getting regular work in a lot of it. He gets more confidence all the time, and uh, uh, no doubt he's hyper about these playoffs. Ian Turnbull, Trevor Johansson, the leap defense. We get set to go. Jimmy Jones, Pat Boutet, Jerry Butler. It's in the faceoff circle, knocked into the corner. Randy Maneri covered by Jones, but it's picked up by Marcel Dion. Got it out on the right side, had it handed back to him. He overstates the puck. Gets it again. Over for Maneri. Pat Boutet bumped him. And Ian Turnbull. Back of the net. Ian Turnbull. Waiting for his teammates to get on side. And it's a cleared pass to Trevor Johansson. Up at center. A long shot. Off the glass. Marcel Dion goes down. Jimmy Jones left it there. And they're going to have a faceoff. Well, Bill, Rogi Vash, I had a rough time of it in game number one in the series. Before the game tonight, we talked to Rogi, and uh, he was telling us he was really up for this second game tonight. He really wanted to put on a good show here in front of the hometown fans. And it's not often you see him have, him have an off night in a playoff game or any other kind of a game. Well, all those goals that were the two that were scored on him tonight, he had no chance whatsoever. Those, he screamed, he can't see anything. Four minutes, 39 seconds remaining in the first period. Two nothing in favor of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Jones with Butler and Boutet. 
Peter Stankowski. Waved out, as is Jimmy Jones. Danny Grant will take this face-off, number 15 for the Kings, against Jerry Butler. Puck is dropped back before you, solving a shot. Vashon stops that and covers up. Well, I want to come back to Rogie Vashon for just a moment because we did talk to him before the game tonight, and we asked Rogie uh, how he felt coming into this second game here in the Forum. Well, uh, I'm going to tell you one thing. They're not going to score seven goals on me tonight, that's for sure. And uh, I think uh, the team is ready. Uh, we had a lot of bad publicity in the, in the papers in Toronto, and I think uh, we're here to prove something that uh, we're not going to quit. And uh, we want to bring that series to Toronto on Saturday night. Right for the feet, that floor, Jimmy Jones from Boyer Selming, and it's 3 nothing. Well, he may have brought Rogie Vasha in at a very inopportune time because no lose sooner did he say they're not going to get seven on him tonight when they get their third. The Leafs hitting the score sheet with three goals here in the first period. So far we've got 431. The Kings are getting a round booing from the fans now and let's watch it again. Again winning that face off. So critical. And this one, Rogie leaves a rebound. 16, Jimmy, Jones. Jimmy Jones, who was sparkled in that first game, gets the goal from Bouquet and Salming. Time of the goal, 1529. Meeting Toronto goal number 16, Jimmy Jones. The Assistant number 15, that's Number 21, Fort Jones. Salming and Boutet as Jimmy Jones brings it out again. 1529 was the time of the goal. 3 0 Toronto Maple Leafs lead with 4.05 remaining in the first period. Up the ice for Palmer. He shot the puck in. The Leafs go back for it. It's Boria Selman touching it. That's icing. Call against the King. Live from the fabulous farm in Los Angeles, the Stanley Cup playoffs. I've had this car for about three years and 130,000 miles, and I look after it. Like using STP oil treatment. A lot of drivers I know add STP to their engines. It gives your car that extra care I like having, whether I'm driving 12 hours a day or just around the block. You free? <laughs> yeah, get in. I never get a break, but my car sure does with STP oil treatment. Toronto Maple Leafs in complete control of the face-offs in the Los Angeles zone. Watch Jimmy Jones now. Had two assists the other night in Toronto. Salming shoots. Jones is right there. Where were the defenders on that one? Jones had all the time in the world to bring that puck out, move around. Rogie Vashon, slip it in the net. Puck slides around on the boards. The Kings trying to get it out. It comes out over the blue line. Stan Weir with Williams and Ellis. Apps gets it over to Randy Maneri. Maneri at center, flips the puck in. Goes wide of the net into the corner. Taken by Trevor Johansson. Johansson to Ron Ellis. Back to Ian Turnbull. Up to Williams, over for Ellis. Ellis back to Johansson. And the Leafs have a real system going for them now. Ian Turnbull. Tried to slip it up for Stan Weir, he did, it was offside. Inside the blue line, over the checkered line at center. Those Kings defensemen must be very embarrassed at this point, letting Jones get in behind them like that. They could say, well, he's small, but the coach could say, for heaven's sakes, he's not invisible. Somebody should have had him in there, and they didn't take him. There wasn't anybody within 10 feet of him. No. Jones having a wonderful series for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Toronto Maple Leafs are leading 3-0 with 3 minutes 11 seconds remaining in the first period. Trevor Johansson cleared it behind the net. Apps by the center it. Ferguson is there. Randy Maneri is shot. That comes into the corner. And it's brought out by Ron Ellis. Ellis, Ferguson and Williams. Flipped it over the line. It's knocked out again. Back down the ice. Number 12, Hartman Monahan is shot. Oops, here stopped that. On a hand goes to the boards. Williams is there. They kick it loose to Apps. Apps is covered by Williams. So Turnbull gets in there. Monahan knocked down by Turnbull. And it's Ferguson bringing it up to center. Back to Turnbull. Turnbull's over the line. Trying to cut in. And he was safe behind the net. Puck comes around on the board. And we have 2.23 remaining. And look at Ferguson. He's back there to get it to Boya Selmy. Over on a Williams stick. He drives it in. 
Meets change on the go. As Sittler, Lanny McDonald, and Maloney are out there. Long pass. That was intercepted. Now over the line. Trying to cut in was number 17, Tony Williams. The Leafs cleared out on the board. Cleared by Mike Pellick to Daryl Sittler. Sittler flips the puck into the corner. Maloney goes after it with Murdoch. Maloney traps the puck, tried to center it. Butch Goring, bearing it up over the blue line. Shot to the right wing. Pellick and Maloney. And the Leafs just seem to be everywhere. Goes back Gary Sands in one minute and 35 seconds to me. Here's Lanny McDonald with the puck. Right out in front of this. Sittler trying to get a shot. And he just took. There he is. Lanny McDonald's there again. Gloria Selmy. Over for Pelling who shot the puck in. Maloney goes after with Sargent. Sargent comes up with it. To Murphy. Ahead to Goring. Goring with 111 remaining in the period. Over the line. Jumped by Selmy. They're going to give Selmy a penalty. He doesn't like it. No, he started back as though he wanted to argue the point with the official, and Daryl Sittler just pointed over toward the penalty bench. Watch now, Goring's rush. And he's set sprawling. Tripping the call. 18.35. On the scoreboard, Philadelphia has moved in front of Colorado 2-1 to one in the third. Seleski has scored 18 minutes left to play. Earlier, Detroit eliminated Atlanta, 3-2 to two, Detroit, and the Rangers came through in overtime. After two goals, one for each club, were disallowed. Murdoch scored in overtime to give the Rangers a 4-3 win over Buffalo. One minute, three seconds remaining in the first period. Ennis win. Shot the puck, it's off the glass, it's behind the net. Knocked around on the board. Jerry Butler finds an opening and shoots it down the ice. 48 seconds remaining in the period. 3 nothing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Completely dominated the Kings. Up to this point anyway. Randy Maneri at center. Stopped by Turnbull. Jimmy Jones after it. It's a delayed whistle offside. And it'll come outside the blue line with 33 seconds. Lanny McDonald, you see the uh, nose protection he's wearing tonight. He took about six stitches in the nose in the first game. And so laughs of the Kings will take us on a tour of Los Angeles by means of film during our first intermission. And Lou Nanny, Leapin' Lou from the Sioux, will be with us as well to analyze the first period. Take us inside the playoffs. Played by Mike Pellick down the ice. Gary Sargent goes back for it, 27 seconds. As Sargent comes to the blue line, up at center, four of them. To the leaf line and over, and it's offside Mike Murphy on the right wing. This crowd really quick to turn on the hometown Kings. They were screaming for them earlier, standing ovation when they came out, and then as soon as they dropped back, which they did very quickly, they turned very suddenly on the Kings. On the faceoff, Goring gets it back to Marcel Dion. 14 seconds remaining. A long pass over on the right wing. Which Goring trying to get around plenty. Jimmy Jones is there. Five seconds left and a faceoff in the leaf zone. Well, I think you'll notice, too, a lot of the sting has gone out of the Kings hitting. They, they were really bumping hard earlier, but when you fall behind like they have, three to nothing, and it could have been worse, it's hard to crank yourself up mentally to step into anybody really hard. And also, you can't afford to take penalties because they're playing catch-up hockey. Trailing 3 nothing with four seconds left in the first period. Goring, Murphy, Sargent, Williams, and Dion. All set to go. Goring against Sittler. And it's shot by Sittler down the ice right for the face-off, and he played that perfectly. And the fans here at the Fabulous Forum rather disgruntled as the team is skating to the dressing room. And 
So the score at the end of the first period. Toronto Maple Leafs, three. And the Los Angeles Kings, nothing. A CBC special. West Looks West, a story of trade between Japan and Western Canada. They have technology, we have resources. It's a very different culture, it's a very different way of doing business. It's probably the only country in the world where you have to file a riot plan with the police. West Looks West, a CBC documentary special, Sunday night at 10. A CBC special, final audition, a showcase of the best new talent in Canada, from folk to the classics. It's an exciting glimpse of 15 stars of the future selected in the Des Maurier Talent Search. This week, see five finalists performing with top flight entertainers backing them up. And be watching Friday, May 19th, when the top five will be selected and presented with $5,000 rewards in a special live broadcast. Final audition with host Fred Davis. Tomorrow night at 9, 9.30 in Newfoundland. 1972, you saw us split a Cartier diamond in a full-size Mercury marquee. Now we're going to risk it in a smaller Mercury Monarch with its own kind of suspension to see if this Monarch's ride is smooth and steady enough. We picked this bumpy road to make it tough. Remember, he must hit it precisely in a pre-cut groove or lose a $50,000 diamond. How did it go? Perfect. Mercury Monarch, we're proud about that. At the sign of the cat. The Leafs' domination of the Los Angeles Kings continues. The Leafs scored twice off face-off assists from Daryl Sittler, Ron Ellis, and Lanny McDonald, and then Jimmy Jones was left unguarded in front of Rogie Vashon. The assist of Pat Boutet and Boreas Salming, and it's 3 to nothing for the Maple Leafs as they attempt to sweep this series in two straight games. In talking about the first playoff series for Los Angeles Kings rookie Dave Taylor, I guess, Dave, we have to talk about... Uh, frustration right off the bat. I know that the Kings uh, are very disappointed and perhaps somewhat shocked to have been handled so easily thus far by the Leafs. Well, that's for sure. Like, uh, we've been having our problems in our own end all this year. And, uh, uh, like, even tonight you can see it. Uh, like, the three goals were all off the face-offs, you know. Uh, we're having our problems, you know, in our own end. Dave, was there anything said by Ron Stewart, or did the players get together to talk about the way the Leafs uh, pushed you around, to be quite blunt, in, uh, in Toronto? Are the Kings the sort of team that can combat that? And uh, if so, how did you plan to do it? Perhaps, uh, not so coincidentally, you were involved in a skirmish with Pat Boutet in that first period. Well, the last game in, in Toronto, we were really pushed around a lot, you know. So, uh, uh, like most of the players were together, and uh, uh, what... What we figured we'd do uh, was when we got home, uh, like we'd try to play more aggressive, uh, we'd try to take the man out, you know, and... Uh, it's not working. Well, uh, it's not working too bad, you know, but we're still making the mistakes on our own end, and uh, they're getting the bad goals on us. Dave, uh, earlier this season I talked to your agent, and perhaps uh, some people don't realize that uh, he is Todd Sloan, former NHL star with the Leafs in Chicago. How did you and Todd hook up? Uh, well, Mr. Sloan, he's just, uh, uh, like, he was, a uh, like, a friend of my father's, you know, and, uh, and I was talking to him over the summer, and, uh, and he offered to help me out, you know, with the contracts and stuff, and I've been very happy with him, like, he's done a very good job for me. Thank you very much to Dave Taylor, Los Angeles rookie. Congratulations on a fine season, and I know a lot too... Too many people didn't know a lot about you uh, coming out of Clarkson College, but they do now. Uh, continued good luck, and uh, again, congratulations on the season. Well, thank you very much. Dave Taylor of the Los Angeles Kings, who trailed the Maple Leafs 3 to nothing at the end of one period. Stanley Cup 78 continues in just a moment. Introducing the patented Mark Collar from Arrow. Revolutionary, and that's fact. It's the first collar ever shaped to fit the human neck. Until now, men's collars have been cut like a tube. The Mark's ingenious shaping is like a cone. Result? A comfort like you've never experienced before. A new crisp look with the neckband out of sight. The patented Mark Collar. Only by Arrow. Everbrood has all kinds of power to get you where you're going in a hurry. Whether you're in a hurry to catch your supper, 
or even in a hurry to catch something else, Evan Root gives you 17 ways to go from 2 to 235 horses. Because some things in life are worth hurrying for, Evan Rood gives you all kinds of power. Well, here we are at the fabulous forum in Los Angeles. The Leafs off to a good start in this road playoff game against the Los Angeles Kings, leading three to nothing. And we're going to have Sil Apps of the Kings take us on a tour of the sea that it certainly did not take long for the Apps to get used to L.A. life. We were interested in knowing exactly what the differences were between his life in Pittsburgh and his life in California. It's nice. Uh, you can get away, uh, you know, five minutes, ten minutes. Usually from where I'm living now, you can get to a beach, uh, marine land, and so forth. Uh, you don't have that uh, hindrance of, of the weather, you know. If you want to go for a drive and say around Pittsburgh and it's snowing, uh, well, all the hills and that, you're not going to go anywhere. Here, there's no snow, so you can you can uh, you can get out, you can drive around, see a lot more things, and not have to worry about that weather factor. They say you missed the changing of the seasons here, but I haven't missed it so far, and uh, it's it's uh, it's rather refreshing, you know. You you can go out in your t-shirt, and it's not like you're sort of holding up in a house waiting for the weather to break. Most of the guys that have been here for a while, uh, like Mike Murphy, uh, he really likes it. Uh, they've, they've got themselves settled down into a house and area they like. Uh, they like the lifestyle. Uh, you know, they can drive up the coast of the day off. You can drive a couple hours up the coast, and it's just a, you know, be just a clear beach. You can go for a walk or whatever. You can drive out to the mountains and towards the desert. Uh, there's so many things to do, that, uh, and they know where to go. That they really, they really enjoy it. One thing is certain for a young family that was born and bred in the wintry east, a family outing to the beach in January isn't hard to take. I think uh, the biggest change for me was coming from a smaller city like Pittsburgh, coming to L.A., uh, it, it just took a lot more time to get around. and. Uh, it was nice, you know, with the weather, it's a lot easier to get around. But I think you tend to be outdoors a lot more, you know, if you're back into a colder climate, you tend to uh, do most of your uh, stuff in the summertime, I mean, the wintertime, indoors. And here you get a chance to get out, you get down on the beach, uh, it's a lot easier to go out with your kids. I don't think the climate is, is the main thing that is uh, makes it difficult. I think uh, because of our traveling, we'll be playing five games at home, and uh, the fourth and fifth game at home are a little tough because you have been at home for so long. It's, uh, it's, it's nice to have that change, you know, you play a couple of games at home, you go away for a game or so, and you come back, I think it keeps you a little sharper. Here you can get uh, a tendency to get into too much of a routine, and uh, I think maybe hockey does uh, become a secondary thing. It's nice to have that change, you know, you play a couple of games at home, you go away for a game or so, and you come back, I think it keeps you a little sharper. Here you can get uh, a tendency to get into too much of a routine, and uh, I think maybe hockey does uh, become a secondary thing. But hockey really isn't secondary to Sil Apps and the rest of the Los Angeles Kings, and nothing would suit him better than to lie on that beach while continuing along the Stanley Cup trail. Well, Sil Apps may enjoy Los Angeles, but he certainly be, can't be finding too much happiness playing the Leafs in this preliminary round series. Leap and Lou from the Sioux. Lou Nanny is with us again tonight, and we'll return with the Stanley Cup playoffs in just a moment. Fisher Price presents The Adventure People Sky Surfer When your child pulls out the line from the action reel and makes a short run Up it goes And if he lets it go The action reel retrieves the line And the Sky Surfer flies free Soaring, sailing, gliding All on its own Till it swoops down to a smooth landing The Adventure People Sky Surfer By Fisher Price Ryder rents trucks, all kinds of trucks, and Ryder does... We were going to go inside the playoffs with Lou Nanny tonight and talk about uh, the Leafs coming to Los Angeles. The weather, the travel, I'm not sure it's too meaningful anymore, the way the Leafs are dominating this game as well. Well, especially, David, none of them went to Vegas like you did, so they're not as tired as you are, but... Uh... <laughs> Basically, uh, you know, one thing is very important. Los Angeles, in fact, I was talking to Goring after the last game in Toronto. Los Angeles, whenever they got back from a long road trip, that was their least successful time at home because of the time change. But in this case, the Leafs and uh, the Kings came out at the same time, so it isn't as significant. 
and especially the way the Leafs got off to a quick start. It sort of took any initiative or motion that the Kings might have had going into the game. Maybe they were thought of being aggressive away from them somewhat to give the Leafs a spark. Consequently, uh, it's just like being played in a neutral ice right now. One facet of the period that we can talk about is face-offs, uh, directly responsible for all three Leaf goals. Well, that's right, David. On the first goal, Daryl Sittler had Ellis on the right side. Sittler's going to draw usually on his backhand, so you keep the left wing on that side. But the puck did come back to the face-off right through his legs, back to uh, Ellis. He took the shot somewhat uh, maybe misguessed by Vachon, and it went by him. On the second goal, he switched, and they put Lanny McDonald over on the uh, r left side, even though he's a right-hand shot, because when you're drawing to your strong side, you want to give the shooter a better angle. And in this case, McDonald goes over to the left wing. The draw comes back. He's able to cut across the top of the circle in a position where nobody can get at him. So he's able to take a shot, and a good one, they score. Third goal, Jimmy Jones wins a draw. It goes back eventually to Selman at the point. No one checks Jones. He breaks right for the net, gets the rebound into the net. And that's why they say face-offs are important, in this case, uh, not only because of the territorial play, because of the resulting factor in three goals. The interesting part of uh, Los Angeles' attempt to try to hit back at the Leafs is the fact that we see Marcel Dion and Butch Goring perhaps hitting as much as anybody, and they're obviously not built for that sort of play. The Kings are almost desperate to try to match the Leafs' muscle. Well, uh, they want to show that everybody's going to be aggressive. They know that everybody's got to take the body. It's not the fact that you have to hit someone real hard, knock them down, knock them out. The fact is you want to stop their flay, uh, flow of play. You've got to break the momentum. By doing that, all you've got to do is get their body in front of them. And in a case like that, small fellows like Goring and Dion can be effective. And that's what they were trying to do. But the Leafs... Uh, after they got the quick goals, they, they not only have the muscle anyway to outmuscle the Kings, but they are the type of club that checks and plays the body. They did it effectively in Toronto. They were able to do it again, getting the, the momentum going from their goals, and uh, they just uh, withstood anything the Kings were going to throw at them, and they came out with that 3 to nothing lead. Lou, the Kings have last line change here at home, but I don't know whether Ron Stewart thinks uh, it's beyond that now, and he, he really has to look for for stronger powers, but uh, the advantage is not there. He's not even using it. Well, he gave up after six minutes. The Leafs went to four lines. It tired out the third line of the Kings, so consequently, Goring had to come out next. That was Siddler's turn up, and uh, Roger Nielsen was able to get his lines back to match in the way he did in Toronto, and it's almost as if Stewart says, the heck with it, I'm going to go with my line against whoever you want to put out. Thank you, Lunetti, for another look inside the playoffs. It looks as though it's going to be a short series in the shortest series possible in Stanley Cup play. The Leafs going for a two-game sweep, leading 3 to nothing. Incidentally, Philadelphia has gone ahead of Colorado 2-1 to one early in the third period at Denver. Live from the Forum in Los Angeles, you're watching the Stanley Cup playoff. Hey there with that car to buy. Grow with us. Hey there with that not to die. Grow with, with us. Adding on that extra room, going off to college soon. Come on, everybody, grow with us. Scotia Plan Loans, a low-cost, convenient way to get yourself growing in dozens of ways, right now. Come to Scotia Bank and grow with us. 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 In an audio market flooded by exotic names, there's still a familiar one. Good morning, world. It's going to be a beauty today. A little dancing, a little romancing. Hey, coming at you, another blast from the past. Miss Jones, further to our meeting with... All right, Joe, that's the latest to school. Charlie 822, this is Baker 701. Come in, please, over. The familiar name, General Electric, for reliable quality audio products. Canadian General Electric, working to give you your money's worth. Here we are at the Forum in Los Angeles, where the Toronto Maple Leafs hold a 3-0 lead over the Los Angeles Kings with some potent scoring in that first period. Bill, come on in and give the scoring, will you? Okay, Brian, and it was all Maple Leafs. There's Ron Ellis from Sittler at 112, McDonald from Sittler at 1038, Jones and Salming and Butet at 1529. That was the scoring in the first period. And now we're all set to start the second period. Jimmy Jones will start it. We have a leaf player, of course, in the penalty box. Boy, assuming he has 55 seconds left in his penalty. They corrected the time. It was 18.55 when the penalty was assessed. And right from the face off, the Leafs drive it down the ice. Goes to Vashon behind the net. 
And Marcel Dion has it. Dion trying to work his way out. Comes up to his own blue line. Up at center. Over the red line. Over the leaf line. Lost it to Turnbow. And Ian Turnbow shoots it right back out again. Daryl Edestrand. A long shot. Wide of the net. Driven off the board. And down the ice by the Leafs. Going back for it is Daryl Edestrand. Covered by Jimmy Jones. Who's trying to force him in his own zone. What's going? Number 19. Watched by Jones. Gets it up to Dion. Up at center. Gets it over the line. Dion went down. Murphy passed it right back outside the blue line. He's got to wait for his teammates to get onside. And the fans here at the Forum are getting a little restless. Goring gets it back to Edestrand. Salming is back out on the ice. Murphy comes over the line. Takes his shot. Knocked down by Palmatier. It's in the corner. Murphy gets it behind the net for Goring. Goring gets it back to the blue line. Edestrand pass. Murphy stopped by Turnbull. And Jimmy Jones lifts it right into the leap bench. Well, I wonder what Ron Stewart said to his players during the intermission. And I wonder how long his term will be as the Kings coach. I heard a television sportscaster today calling for his ouster from behind the bench. George McGuire is the general manager here and Jack Kent Cook, the owner who now lives in Las Vegas but keeps in daily contact with George McGuire about the fortunes or should we say misfortunes of the Kings. Apps number 14 at center, Hartman Monahan number 12 and Goldup are his wingers, Bob Murdoch and Gary Sargent and the Leafs have Stan Weir, Williams and Boutet, the puck into the Kings bench this time, and the faceoff will be in the circle. Toronto Maple Leafs leading 3 0 in the first minute of the second period. Alan Ellis comes out with Pat Boutet and Stan Weir as they take Williams off. Now it's cleared out to center right. Murdoch gets it over to Gary Sargent. Sargent's pass stopped by Boria Selming, and he flips the puck down into the King's territory. Pat Boutet goes after it, and Murdoch got it, cleared it around on the boards to Gold Up. Gold Up out for Apps, trying to find a breakaway play. Apps was checked. Then it's Gold Up. Gets over the line. It's bumped, spun around, and Stan Weir gives it for Pat Boutet, who cleared it out to center right. Murdoch. Back to Sargent. From the red line, a long shot, wide of the net. The rebound bounces to Glennie. Glennie just selects to shoot it down the ice. That's going over the red line. It'll be called for Iser. Gary Sargent, who might have made it big in baseball or football, but chose hockey, comes back. You know, if you wonder why the Kings fans are disgruntled, Bill, the Kings have won only one of their last eight home games, six losses and one tie. They wound up the season here on a very unhappy note. Vic Banaski, number 10, out for the first time was Stamkowski. Philadelphia now leading Colorado three to one. They're in the third. Kelly has scored for the Flyers. 7.55 to play in that game. And the faceoff, it's Williams with Stan Weir. Weir had the puck, and an area shot, and that just missed the side of the net as it went through, but it was off the target. They have it against the boards again, and now the Kings are trying to press the least to make mistakes in their own zone. Salming went back to have a chat with Palmatier. Salming raised his glove, missed the puck, and it almost caught the corner of the net. On the faceoff, the Kings win the draw. Randy Maneri, another shot. That's deflected way wide, and Ron Ellis for Stan Weir and Boria Salming. Stan Weir steals the puck over the line, closing in, and he's chased off by Randy Maneri. Grabs him. There's going to be a holding penalty there to number two, Randy Maneri. As Stan Weir couldn't move. From the fabulous forum in Los Angeles, this is Stanley Cup 78. You get a lot of luck with every lotto, but with Atlantic Lotto. And there it was. Boom. Big winner. 
$5,000. You get a lotto luck with every lotto, but with Atlantic Lotto. You could be our next Atlantic Lotto winner. Have you got all your tickets yet? Get a lotto luck with every lotto, but with Atlantic Lotto. So the Kings take the first penalty of this second period. Randy Maneri, their most valuable defenseman, for holding at 238. It was Stan Weir who stole the puck at the Kings' blue line, and Maneri held it. And the faceoff, the Leafs have possession. Goes into Lanny McDonald, back for Oria Salmi, but Sittler lost his stick and hit the stick. Deflects back to the blue line. A long pass up for Lanny McDonald with Daryl Sittler over the line. Back to Lanny McDonald. In behind the net. Into the corner. Takes a look. Back it comes to Salming. Over to Sittler. Sittler takes his shot. Bashan stopped that. Panaski drives it down the ice. Thomas here had to stop it. Oya Salming back for it. 3-0. Toronto Maple Police leading in the second period. Gloria Salming, number 21 at the blue line. The Sittler at center. Back for Salming. He's over the line. Back to Turnbull. In to Sittler for Danny Maloney. Maloney then to Lanny McDonald. Danny McDonald trying to get out in front. Gives it to Sittler. Darrell Sittler. Trying to find the slot. Over for Turnbull. Going right in. And that was deflected over the top of the net. Darrell Sittler has it again. Back to Turnbull. Ian Turnbull getting right in front with a shot, and that's knocked into the corner. Turnbull has it again. Ian Turnbull to Darrell Sittler. Darrell Sittler still has it. Trying to get it in front of the net. Coming in front, takes his shot. That's knocked down by Sergeant, but not out. Tiny McDonald, 10 for Maloney. Maloney trying to get out in front. That's on. Shot it off the boards, but not out. Gloria Selming. Then to Lanny McDonald. Takes the pass to Fittler. Another shot. That's poked across the goal mount. Turnbull into the corner. Maloney. He left it there for Lanny McDonald. Lanny McDonald in the corner. Back of the net to Maloney. And Maloney then to Lanny McDonald. And it's grabbed by Vashon. He holds on. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the fabulous farm in Los Angeles. Love Songs, a 20-star collection of super mellow music. Paul Anka. I don't like to sleep alone. Diana Ross. You know where you're going to. David Soul. Don't give up on us, baby. Dan Hill. Sometimes when we turn, the honesty. Disc six ninety nine, tape seven ninety nine in the stores now. Love songs. And we're back now with Ferguson getting set to face off against Butch Goring, number nineteen. Police are playing every man up. The penalty is over to Maneri. On the face off, Williams took a shot that didn't go anywhere. Glenny will just shoot it into the corner behind the net. Over to the far wing, Darrell Edestrand along the board. And it goes out to center ice where it's picked up by Williams. Over to Brian Glenny. Off the board for Ferguson. He was stopped. The puck went into the bench right near Randy Maneri. And that's where the faceoff will be, almost in front of him. Butch Goring finished with 20 goals, 21 assists in the second half of the season. He was named the Kings' most valuable player at a career high of 37. Ferguson, Williams, and Ellis, Mike Pellick, and Brian Glenny. Goes back to Pellick, to Williams, who goes back into his own territory. Watched by Goring, who's in front of the net. Williams has it to Brian Glenny, over to Mike Pellick. Off the board, past Ellis, the center. Played over by Edison to Palmer. Palmer drives it around on the board. Ellis takes the fan out. Brian Glenny then up for Williams. Williams to Ferguson. Ferguson over the line. George Ferguson centered it. And Mike Pellick drove it wide. Pellick trying to keep the puck in. Lost it. 
Goring has it now, number 19 at center for L.A. Over the line for Murphy. He's covered. Mike Pelican pinned it around on the glass. There's it up for Ellis. That's broken out by Ellis. Trying to get it in shot. Ferguson misses it, and it's knocked out by Ellis. Got back in again offside, a deliberate offside, and we'll have a face off. Mike Murphy of the Kings, the captain, leads the Kings in playoff scoring with 25 points over his career. And a reminder that Major League Baseball returns to CBC television tomorrow with the Toronto Blue Jays in their home opener against Detroit. And the Montreal Expos opening their 10th season against the New York Mets. Check your local listings for game and time in your area. Fourteen minutes and one second remaining in the second period. Three nothing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Jones, Butler, Boutet, Turnbull, and Trevor Johansson. Marcel Dion out at center for the Los Angeles Kings. Here's back to Boutet and to Turnbull. His shot was wide. Rebound over on the far side. Danny Grant just shot at the length of the ice. It's right on the net. Turnbull goes back for it. Ian Turnbull, a pass out on the right wing. Cleared by Butler over the blue line, and Bob Murdoch shoots it up on the right side. Number 18, Dave Taylor. And he was hit by Trevor Johansson. Behind Palmatier up the back on the other side. He was very fortunate on that one. He didn't back into it. Harry Sargent comes back over the line, offside. Well, wow, Danny Grant, number 15. Well, before the game, we had a word with Jimmy Jones, who talked about his job in this series, mainly checking Marcel Dion. Let's listen to Jimmy. Well, on our team, uh, everybody has a special job to do, and my job the other night was to check Marcel Dion. Uh, it turned out very well. Uh, everybody enjoys scoring goals, and uh, I like scoring goals too, but you know, my job was uh, specifically to check Marcel Dion, and uh, that's what I hope to do. Well, he enjoyed scoring a goal in that first period, and he also has two assists earlier to go with it. Three points in the series so far, Jimmy Jones. Off is Gloria Salmane to Mike Pellick up for Jack Pellicat who flips it in. Going back is Edda Strand. Edda Strand around on the board for Bert Wilson. He was bumped. William. He's covered by Edda Strand. The puck behind the net. Comes up to, to absent the blue line up at center. A long shot. Oh, he got that on the chest and held on to it. Taking a lot of shots at Palmateer from long range. He shut out the Kings for two periods the other night and shut them out twice during the regular season. A lot of fans here from uh, Canada, St. Catharines, Toronto represented, Joe McLean, Murray Day, Billy Day's brother down from Calgary. They're the oil barons up there, I understand, and from Cassier, B.C., up there by Whitehorse. A fellow just went by me and says, say hello to the fellas in the bunkhouse back home. Dan Weir ready to face off with Apps. He won the draw, cleared up for Kurt Walker. He couldn't get it out. Now it's a clearing pass to Weir, up to Williams with Walker. A long shot into the corner and ends up behind the net. Go, Edgell, giving it to Edison. Got it out to center ice. The Leafs just shoot it right back in again. And the Kings will have to go back. Goes to Randy Maneri. This pass taken by Apps comes to the Blue line not over as he was checked by Boyas only. Gets it back to Maneri. Maneri shot it to an open wing. There was nobody there. It's picked up by Selming. Boreas Elming. Up to William. To Stan Weir. Lost the puck to Ash. Half comes back. Over the blue line. Check. Puck goes loose. Wilson covered by Walker against the board. Play is called. This is Stanley Cup 78 from the Fabulous Forum in Los Angeles. There have been more Ford vans registered in Canada than any other make. And now your Ford and Mercury dealers have a wide selection of 1978 vans, all with Ford's out front van design. All with a move forward engine that gives you more move around room inside. Ford's got them all. 
from hard-working business vans to Ford's freewheeling van and cruising vans that come already customized. There have been more Ford vans registered in Canada than any other make and a wide selection to choose from at your Ford or Mercury dealer now. And there we are, live from Los Angeles, as we get set to face off again inside the Maple Leaf Blue Line. They have a 3 nothing lead with 11.58 to go. In the second period, there's the captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Daryl Sittler, number 27. And he's having a chat with Lanny McDonald, where he wants him placed. Now then, Lanny McDonald picks up his check, Tommy Williams. Remember Johansson over with Gary Sargent. And he knocked the puck out to center right. Sargent has it, gets it over to Palmer. Palmer's pass for Murphy is shot in. Palmer stopped it. He covered Johansson in the corner. Got it around to Lanny McDonald. Lanny McDonald coming out with Sittler and Maloney. Maloney shot it over the line, knocked back out again. And Murphy, too well covered by Maloney. Maloney fights him for the puck. Sittler goes in to help. He gets to Lanny McDonald. He's got a breakaway. Going in alone. Right in the oh, oh, the open side. He had Bash on down. And he just couldn't get a, a wood on it. And that foot score is now tried. For the pass for Palmer. Knocked off the puck. Trevor Johansson that, that ends up in the match. It's going outside the blue line. And the uh, linesman move in quickly. Neil Armstrong closing in on 200 playoff games. I think he has 190 now. This is 190th tonight. Just a few behind Matt Pavlich. Lanny McDonald had a breakaway opportunity there, getting in behind Gary Sargent. I don't know what happened to the puck, whether it slipped off his stick just as he went to shoot or whether somebody just nudged him at the last second. Maybe we can catch it on the replay. Here's McDonald. From behind, Sergeant just got a stick on his elbow as he tried to shoot. That upset him, I'm sure. Ryan Glenny. For Pat Boutet to Jimmy Jones. Jones up at center with Butler. Shot the puck in. He's up there to cover Marcel Dion. Then Pat Boutet moves in. And into the board as he missed Dion with a body check. Number 21, Glenn Goldup, coming out now to center. Pass over on the left wing, shot into the corner. Back is Gloria Salming. Salming off the glass, Boutet couldn't get it. Randy Maneria pass, deflected by Salming. Picked up by Salming, shot it out. Boutet races after it. Played by Maneri for Goldup. Leaps, intercept, over the line for Butler, a shot. And that's outside. Ten minutes. I was just going to say, 10 minutes, 16 seconds. Left to play, second period, and a final score now again once more. The Rangers over Buffalo, 4-3 to three tonight in overtime. Philadelphia has now defeated Colorado, 3-1. to one. That's a final. And Detroit won, 3-2 to two over Atlanta tonight. Detroit advances. Darrell Edistran, number 25, back of the net. Gets it over on the wing to Randy Maneri. Flipped it out, stopped there by Brian Glennie. Shoots it right back in again. And the Leafs are using four men at the blue line. And the Kings just can't get out. Jerry Butler trying to get the puck. Rolled up on the left side. Covered by Butler. East checked by Boya Selming. Selming was then spun around. Marcel Dior up at center. Very pass for Goldup. Goldup trying to find a man in position. It's tipped out by... Jerry Butler all the way to center right. Comes back to Bob Murdoch. Murdoch passed to Edistrand. And he just shot it for some reason over the red line. And their fans are really getting it. With the score, Toronto Maple Leafs three and the Kings nothing. This is Stanley Cup 78. Edmonton this summer, the Commonwealth Games of 1978. People from around the world getting together to bring harmony through sport. CBC will be there to bring it all to you. August of 78, the 11th Commonwealth Games on CBC. 
spirit, got the spirit now. And we're back now for the face-off in the Los Angeles King Zone to the right. Dan Weir with Ellis and Williams, along with Turnbull and Joe Hanson. Bob Murdoch along with Apps. And Burt Wilson, number eight, over on the wing. He and Williams went down. The puck comes back out at center. Offside from inside the blue line over the red line at center, and that brings it back inside the Kings blue line. Well, looking ahead to Saturday night, game three in this series is scheduled for Maple Leaf Gardens at Toronto. If that is necessary, we, of course, will be there to bring it to you. If it's all over tonight, the Leafs should win it two to straight, then watch for the Rangers at Buffalo, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time from Buffalo. Dan Weir to Ian Turnbull a shot. Rogie that shot stopped that. Steered it into the corner. Murdoch is checked by Williams. Dan Weir has the puck back to Turnbull again a shot. Rogie Vashon drops down and covers up. Wilson and Williams still having a little private view to their own. Well, this is about round 18. They go at each other every time these clubs meet or so it appears. Brian Lewis moves in there with the linesman. Brian Lewis was uh, telling me that one of the roughest games he ever refereed this year was Detroit at Buffalo earlier this season. He said he thought for a while it was like World War III. Didn't know where he was going to put all the players. There were just too many of them in the penalty box. And he thought for a while he'd have to send the additional people down to the Zamboni entrance. Kurt Walker has come out now to play on the right side. Dan Weir and Williams. The puck cleared around by apps on the boards for Wilson. Kurt Walker went after him. That nearly started something. Shot back to the leaf blue line, and Ian Turnbull has it. Harry Sargent checked him. Back up the ice now for Heitman Monahan. He's bumped. Ever Johansson gives it to Stan Weir. Weir up for Walker on the right wing. Walker trying to get to the loose puck. It comes to Stan Weir. Weir going in alone, right in it, and he went too far. Dan Weir smacks his stick down. Walker. Turnbull's there as well, and Sargent. That's the second time Weir has gone right in close on Rogi Vasha, trying to make that extra little move. And again, he was completely frustrated, slamming a stick on the ice after the puck stopped in Rogi's pads. Ron Stewart, 21 years in the NHL, a brief term as coach of the Rangers, and now suffering the agonies of coaching behind the Kings bench. Trailing three to nothing with 8-19 to play in the second period. And Darrell Edistrand purchased from Boston wearing 25. Hitler with Maloney and Lenny McDonald. Puck was not dropped fairly. Philadelphia outshot Colorado 45 to 17 tonight, Bill. Well, it must have been just absolutely sensational. Darrell Sittler wins the draw, tried to get it to Lanny McDonald. Let's scoring. Missed the check. Sittler then covered him. Goes over for Murphy too far. Mike Kelly back to get it. Against the board. Missed the check for Murphy. And Sittler sends Maloney down the left wing. Maloney shoots the puck as he crosses the red line into the corner. Lanny McDonald, Darrell Sittler. Lanny McDonald's got the puck. Trying to get it out in front of the net. And Edis Brand shoots it around on the boards for Murphy again. Murphy hit by Darrell Sittler. Over the right line for Palmer, a shot. And then Danny Maloney with the puck. Failed to get it out. Kept in, got into the corner. Nowhere near anybody. Palmer gets it now with a shot. Tight spot. And it's cleared by Korea Selming down the ice. It's not going to go across the red line. Seven minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the second period. Leafs have a 3 nothing lead. Butch Gorey, number 19. Over it goes to Palmer. Up over the at center ice, played by Pellick. 
Now it's picked up by Golda. Golda gets it over the line. Mike Pellick is there. Pellick with Lanny McDonald and Pat Boutet. Lanny McDonald just flips the puck in. Heads to the bench. Pat Boutet centers it. There's nobody there. Gary Butler, Jimmy Jones on the ice. Marcel Dion and Golda. Golda hits his shot. He missed. Gary Butler. For Trevor Johansson. The puck goes loose and three leaves break out. Jimmy Jones, Jerry Butler, takes the pass. Butler, passed it right in front. Turnbull was back, shot it back into the corner again, and it ends up behind the net to Murdoch. Murdoch coming out now for Los Angeles. Six minutes, 19 seconds remaining in the second period. Three nothing for the Maple Leafs. Herbert Johansson, carrying it but not out. Jerry Sargent a shot, now the turn stop that. Pat Boutet for Jimmy Jones. Jones gets it over the line. Gary Sargent bringing it back, covered by Jones. And Trevor Johansson just cleared it over to the board. Murdoch shoots it in. Goes into the corner. Trevor Johansson is there. And he flips a high one down to center ice. Randy Maneri shooting it back offside. Final score, Philadelphia 3, Colorado 1. This Stanley Cup playoff is coming to you from the fabulous Forum in Los Angeles. You're about to be welcomed to one of the best hotels in the world. The hotels with the best locations, near the things you need to be near. The hotels with the best system of standards for taking care of you. The hotels that take care of more travelers than anybody else. Holiday Inn welcomes you to some of the best hotels in the world. Well, that battered helmet of Butch Garing, he's carried with him since peewee hockey. Very superstitious young man, a very unhappy man, trailing by three here in the second period. 5.42 left in the period. Goes over to Voya Salming, number 21, inside his own territory, over to Brian Glennie. Glennie, unable to get it out, Peter Stankowski after it, number 11, taken away from him by Boya Salming. After, after Salming and Williams to Brian Glennie. Knocked it out over the line, straight back in, Edison after it. Edison, wait, gets his shot, Thomas stop that. Ferguson goes to the boards with Owen. That's the first time the Leafs have given the puck away in this second period, and it nearly cost them. The latter half of this period, they've been much more defensively uh, oriented out there. They've been meeting the Kings right on their own blue line, playing it very calmly inside their own zone. And if there is a hint of trouble, they've been flipping those long high shots out to center ice. There they did get trapped briefly. Salming has a great playoff uh, record for the Leafs. 19 points in his last 21 playoff games. Leafs win the draw. Borea Salming along the boards. Then it's going to keep it in and went off his stick down the eight. Five minutes and four seconds to go in the second period. Peter Stemkowski to Edisfran. Edisfran covered by Ferguson and Salming. Took the puck away from him. Gets it over to Brian Glennie. Glennie up for Valakat to Ferguson. Ferguson over the line. Covered by Edisfran. And it's Peter Stemkowski in front of his own net. Shot it over onto the wing. It's cleared out by Wilson. Look out. Randy Maneri was hit by Brian Glennie. And bumped into Velikat. Goes over on the far side. Edison has a long shot. Ends up in the corner. Velikat after it. Zampowski centered. Goes over to Gary Sargent. And Boria Salming is there. He shot it around on the glass. Velikat ahead to Ferguson. Number 10 coming up at center. Shoots the puck in. Ends up. Boogie Vashar out of his net. Cleared into the corner. There's a race for it. Maloney's in there first. Tried to hit Sittler. Darrell Sittler helps him out. Tried to get it out in front. Peter Stamkowski. Cross-check. Williams. Coming up to center. Stamkowski a shot. It goes to the board. Maloney touching it. Players call.
picks up down in the corner. The crowd standing. Live from the fabulous forum in Los Angeles, the Stanley Cup playoffs. A Lotto Canada package for Mother's Day. Isn't he a sweetheart? He sure is. You could win up to $5,000 if your number matches one of the numbers chosen on the Mother's Day draw May 12th. You could win a million June night. You could win right now. Instant money up to $500. You going to take us for dinner? Oh, I could. But I won't. You get three chances to win with one Lotto Canada package. Now, that's, that's my... my kind of lottery. Thank you. Make it yours. Let's see if we can catch this high-sticking penalty to Tiger Williams now at 16-14 of the third period. Stemkowski behind the net. Look out. Stemkowski saw Williams coming, and the stick came up. So Williams goes to the box, but the Leafs have been great on the power play, the penalty killing, rather. More about that in a moment. And the face-off is for you, Soming, clearing it to the blue line, but not out. Gary Sargent shot. Taken by Williams. Williams trying to find a man in position, Murphy. Murphy in the corner, trying to get it up in front, trying to back the sergeant, over to Marcel Dion, over to Murphy, a shot, very wide. Jimmy Jones tapped it to the blue line, but not out. Sergeant brought it out, and then the referee called it outside. Well, the Kings just can't do anything right now. Well, you go back to last Saturday against Boston, the uh, Leafs were shorthanded three times, didn't give up a power play goal. They were shorthanded eight times against Buffalo on Sunday and six times against the Kings Tuesday night. That's uh, 17 straight times without a power play score against them. One minute and 33 seconds remaining in Williams' penalty. Gloria Thelming clears it into the crowd. And so they'll have a face-off in the circle to the right of Mike Palmer here. One five, five short-handed goals. A lot seven. They scored five. Salming wanted to get a new stick at the lead bench. The Kings get one on the score sheet here with time running out in the second period. It'll give them a lift going into that final 20 minutes. Marcel Dion, Goring, Murphy, Williams, and Sajic. Right from the face off. Palmateer stopped that one. From Butch Goring. Mike Palmateer making a good save. Hasn't oh. been that busy, but when he has, he's been right on. Busy all season, though, Bill, and you can tell it by that record. 34 wins. He has four playoff victories and three losses in his brief NHL career. Ten minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the second period. 3-0 for the Maple Leafs. Puck is in the behind the net. Goes to Murphy. Murphy centered it up. Right, it's deflected. There's a race for it. Vashon coming way out. And Vashon covers up and holds on to it. Otherwise, the Leafs would have had a breakaway. That's a real one. He wanted to do it the safe way and smother that puck rather than try to shoot it down the ice or stick handle past anybody. Murphy Dion, Goring, Edestrand. And Danny Grant, number 15. Played by Boria Salming offside. It was outside the blue line. His teammate was in, so it comes outside. Two minutes, 58 seconds remaining, second period. 112 remaining in the penalty. You can see there, which is 22. That's the number of Dave Williams. Marcel Dion to Edestrand. Edestrand passes it back to Gore. Going up to Dion. Dion at center. It's around Jones. Go has the puck. Shot it over and it hopped over Danny Grant's stick. Back to Edestrand is shot. Amateur stopped that. Jimmy Jones is given a shove. Into it goes Mike Pellick. They hold it against the board. Play is called. 
Now we're down to 2.27 left to play in the second period. We've had a very pleasant flight out here. American Airlines passengers uh, gathered around. A lot of the players asking for autographs. They seemed in a very buoyant, confident mood after the win in Toronto. And uh, Mr. Ballard and Mr. Clancy took in the races at the racetrack and uh, generously contributed vast amounts of cash in an effort to improve the breed, I'm sure. On the face-off, gold up, passed it right out to center ice to Daryl Ennis -Rath. Over for Grant, River Johansson got it back to the blue line, and gold up has it now, dropping it to Daryl Ennis at his own blue line, up to the red line at center. Got the puck in, goes behind the net, Palmas here, then flipped it for Ferguson. Ferguson is covered, Dion gets the puck, turned it back to gold up, gold up trying to get it. In front to Dion. Dion takes the shot over to Ennis Man. There's his shot. Palmateer's got that and holds on. Eight seconds left in the penalty to Dave Williams. Well, Palmateer been extremely steady in that goal tonight. Look at Leaf Bench. And there, well, there's the Kings bench. And a reminder again that if a third game in this series is necessary, it'll be back in Toronto at the Garden Saturday night. We'll be there to bring you all the action. And if it's not necessary, then we'll be in Buffalo to bring you the Ranger Sabre game, the final game of their three game series. Puck goes back to the net, cleared around by Turnbull, and it goes over the glass into the crowd. Just two seconds left now on the penalty to Tiger Williams. Weather's been cool and cloudy here in Los Angeles. A little bit disappointing. Number 14, Silaps. At center with Golip. The shot was wide of the leaf net. On Ellis. Trying to get out on the right wing as Williams is back on the ice. Ellis still with it. Then Ferguson helps him out. George Ferguson. A drop pass to Ian Turnbull. Ellis lost his stick. Gets to the blue line, but not over it. Soon enough, so he's trapped offside. One and a half minutes remaining in the second period. Three nothing for the Maple Leafs. Tiger Williams, 351 penalty minutes, broke his own club record of 338 set last season. He was second to Pittsburgh's Dave Schultz in penalty minutes. Schultz checked in with 405 this season. Ian Turnbull crosses the red line over the blue line. Turnbull trying to close in. Murdoch had him covered. Turnbull gets behind the net. The puck is still there. Dan Weir tried to get a hold of it. And it's Bob Murdoch. Long pass. Trevor Johansson hits Dan Weir. Weir gets it over the line. Dan Weir was just right into the penalty bank. Gets back out of it. One minute remaining. One minute. They had the puck into the corner, and that was an oddity. He went right over. Back up for Golda. At center. Over the line. Golda. Try to get it in front. Goes into the corner. Dan Weir after it. 44 seconds. Comes out in front. Back it comes to Sergeant. There's the shot. Why? Williams and Murdoch bump together. Williams gets the puck. Tiger Williams coming out. Way to pass for Weir. That's going down the ice. Ends up behind the net. 22 seconds. And there'll be a face on him. I have never seen that before in my life. Weir spent the shortest amount of time ever in the penalty box. Watch now as Sargent drops him right inside the box. Where did he go? He's disappeared. But he hopped right back out again. There's Stan getting to his skates. The crowd really howled over that one. 21 seconds remaining in the second period. Leafs have a 3 0 lead. All the scoring back in the first period. Right from the draw. The puck comes back. A shot. It bounces over to Maloney. Maloney passed it over for Lanny McDonald. Lanny McDonald closing in with 11 seconds, and he whipped that one. And it went over the glass into the crowd. Eight seconds left. Second period. 
Hartland Monahan, number 12. The Kings have given up the first goal now in 15 of their last 18 hockey games. And the old saying goes, the team that scores first normally wins the game. And the faceoff, it's Edistrand shooting it out and down the ice. Turnbull looks up, then goes all the way back. And there goes the horn, and the second period is over. And we didn't have any scoring in that second period. We at least checking fiercely. And the Kings just couldn't get on track. And so the score at the end of the second period, Toronto Maple Leafs three and the Los Angeles Kings nothing. A special album of 25 all-time favorites. This 25 all-time favorites album is in the stores now. Album 699, tape 799, The Magic Organ. Hey there with those kids to dress. Row with us. Hey there sitting at that desk. Row with us. Scotia Club. For one low monthly charge, you enjoy unlimited check writing privileges. Scotia Bank charge checks, traveler's checks at no charge, overdraft protection, and more. Scotia Club, the services you like best in one package. Come to Scotia Bank and go with us. Go with us, go with us, go with us. Now, Hitachi brings out its biggest gun for the new 26-inch Luminar 1 color console. Luminar 1, the system that gives you full beam color. Full beams that leave no gaps like conventional systems, but put all the color on the screen. Look at the elegant wood cabinet. It's five inches slimmer, thanks to our new 110 degree picture tube. The 26 inch Luminar One. New from Hitachi. The Leafs seem quite content to hold on to the three nothing lead, which they built in the first period of play. That was a strictly defensive show by the Maple Leafs. The Kings seem to be coming on, but uh, aren't really very close to getting that first goal. And of course, they are still well back, trailing by three. In the first period, Ron Ellis from Daryl Sittler, Lanny McDonald from Daryl Sittler, and then Jimmy Jones scored from Pat Boutet and Boria Salming. Now we have a repeat performance of the greatest hits of the National Hockey League. And here he is, Johnny Wayne. Canada's number one hockey fan with part three of his mini series. Confessions of a Hockey Nut. Hi. Got to read you this letter I got. It says, Dear Johnny, I've got a beef. Every time I turn on my TV set, I see commercials for the greatest hits of rock and roll, country and western, jazz, blues, classical. There's a commercial for every kind of fan except us hockey nuts. Isn't there anything you can do about it? Signed, sick of being shut out. Well, dear sick, I know what you're talking about. Because right here on Hockey Night in Canada, they've got a commercials for Bobby Vinton fans, like this one. It's the Bobby Vinton Party Music Album. Strike up the music, the band is The Pennsylvania folk. Remember that? Well, hockey nuts, our time has come. Because right now, for a limited time only, we are offering greatest hits of the NHL. Yes, greatest hits of the NHL, now available for the first time. Hit after hit after hit. As an added bonus, this set of teeth, autographed by Bobby Clark. Yes, greatest hits of the NHL, like these. Individually, these hits would cost you thousands of dollars in fines. And if you act quickly, we'll throw in the following infractions. Deliberately delayed. 
playing the game. Plus hits of the 50s. And the 60s. And for you nostalgia buffs, a stroll down memory lane with the Philadelphia Flyers. Plus these collector's items. Don't miss this fabulous collection. And Tiger Williams, this offer is only available in Canada. Only in Canada, you say? Pity. There isn't a straight man left in the NHL. Greatest hits of the NHL. Void were prohibited by law. Well, that wraps up another edition of Confessions of a Hockey Nut. Pity. It's okay, Tiger. We'll be back soon. The only great hit the Kings have had tonight was when they put a Leaf out of the playing service. If they could do it to 10 or 12 more, they might have a chance. But otherwise, the Leafs are in command and appear headed for the Stanley Cup quarterfinals. In a moment, Lou Nanny, and we'll talk more with the coach and general manager of the Minnesota North Stars as Stanley Cup 78 continues in just a moment. challenge of the unknown. Some men go out of their way to find it. But one thing they won't take a chance on is the way they look. So they use Brill Cream. Brill Cream conditions hair. Keeps it looking healthy. Natural. Keeps you confident you're looking your best. Brill Cream. For men who'll take a chance on just about anything but the way they look. The cat is elegant. The cat is aloof. And now, the cat comes alive with excitement for 78. Mercury Cougar XR7. Elegantly sculptured, deeply cushioned and padded in glove soft vinyls. XR7 excitement prowls on steel belted radials through a whole line of Cougar running mates alive with XR7 excitement. Isn't this your year to join the cat set? At the sign of the cat. It's our favorite dinner, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Every piece so tender, so finger-licking good. Dinner's ready. We love Dinner's the salad, ready. the french fries, and the Grecian bread. Our favorite dinner. And thanks to the Colonel, it's sure easy on me. Dinner's ready at Kentucky Fried Chicken. How about going outside the playoffs with Lou Nanny this time to talk about his Minnesota North Stars? Unfortunately for Lou, that's as far outside as you can go. But uh, things could be better next year. Everybody is wondering if you're going to draft the, the junior that uh, most people think you will draft. Well, David, uh, we're very impressed with Bobby Smith, and I know that's the one you mean. He plays for Ottawa 67. I've seen him already. Uh, we have made no bones about it. We're going to pick him. He's going to be our property. It's going to be up to him to decide whether he wants to play for the North Stars and in the National Hockey League. And I'm confident that he will because he knows that uh, we've got a good organization and we're in the best league in hockey. And if you're a youngster and you want to play hockey, I'm sure that you always want to play with the best. It's got to be a dream for him, and we hope that he's going to be a dream for us. You also uh, have in mind the hiring of a coach. I know you don't want to uh, handle a dual role. Uh, that didn't really sound the way it... Uh, it I meant you're going to get me in trouble. No, 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 no. <laughs> but uh, when you took the job, uh, you uh, you told everybody you didn't want to, to do both in another year. Um, the top candidate on uh, the list, as far as I have heard, is Harry Neal at New England, <laughs> who is uh, still, of course, involved in WHA plays. So 
Perhaps you haven't hired him yet, but what are you going to? See, you just said you weren't going to get me in trouble. All I said, they asked me uh, some people that I uh, liked, and I said, Harry Neal is the type of coach that I like. Also, Herbie Brooks from the University of Minnesota. And I mentioned Marshall Johnson from Denver, who used to coach Oakland. I've got some uh, candidates in mind, and when the season is over, everybody's season's over, I will go to the people, and if they're still under contract, I'll go to their organization, ask for permission to talk to them, and then I'll proceed from there. You're great. <laughs> Let's go outside this playoff series. Now talk about the other ones. Are you surprised Detroit beat Atlanta two straight? Yes, I am surprised. Atlanta, outside of their last loss to Washington on Sunday night, was probably the hottest team in hockey at that time, and, of course, then it became Washington, who won four in uh, and tied two in their last six but uh, Atlanta I thought was going to be a tough playoff team to beat in Atlanta and I know Detroit was playing very strongly at home so I expected that series to go to three with the edge going to Atlanta because of the home home game but uh, Detroit as you know has been playing extremely well they beat Montreal Sunday they had the momentum going in and it seemed to carry them right on into the next uh, round the quarterfinals. Philadelphia swept Colorado, but they didn't have an easy time doing it. I didn't expect they would either. Colorado, first of all, plays very strongly at home, and they've got the type of team that uh, works all the time. And Philadelphia was having a few problems scoring goals. They were concerned about their play. Colorado was going in with a lot of enthusiasm at that time of the year, which is very important. And you're going in the underdog, which you like to go in, because uh, people aren't expecting too much from you, so you're playing with less pressure than normally you would have going into the playoffs. You're in a position to upset a team. Philadelphia, of course, had to be pressing. They had to be down somewhat because they finally lost their division championship to the Islanders. They were uh, unseated. So it gave Colorado the chance for an upset, especially in that first game. They came close to doing it, but the strength of the Flyers carried them through, and now, uh, as you know, they're going to move on. The uh, potential for the biggest upset is the Rangers versus Buffalo going to a third game Saturday in Buffalo. Well, Buffalo is tough to beat in Buffalo. They're a good skating club. They play in the rink very well. They've got the enthusiastic home crowd. Uh, they played a strong game in uh, New York tonight and they're getting beaten in overtime. So they are playing well and looks at this time that uh, Buffalo has to be the favorite. Well, the Rangers will try to pull that upset on Saturday night, and here the Kings have one period to try to take the Leafs to a third game. Live from the Forum in Los Angeles, the Stanley Cup playoffs. If you lined up all the products and services that Atlantic Canada produces and EPA uses, you'd cover enough space to land one of our aircraft. To us, being better means being more of what we are, part of Atlantic Canada. See how much better an airline can be. Fly Eastern Provincial Airways. A CBC Sports Season Opener. Major League Baseball with both the Blue Jays and the Expos, or if you prefer, the Expos and the Blue Jays. It's National and American League action with the 1978 season home openers of both teams here on CBC. The Toronto Blue Jays play Detroit, and the Montreal Expos go against the New York Mets. Major League Baseball 78. Tomorrow afternoon on CBC. With the secure feeling of control that's important in a small car. Fiesta, 0 to 80 kilometers in an average of 8.8 .8 seconds. Road gripping Michelin radial tires. The traction of front wheel drive. And excellent gasoline economy. Fiesta, imported from Germany by Ford. Test drive Fiesta at your Ford or Mercury dealer today. Well, this is kind of fun being right in with the crowd at the Los Angeles Forum. We've had a lot of Canadians stop by during the intermission. Hard to get any work done or catch up on the statistics because of all the Canadians in the audience tonight. They're here from the Maritimes, from British Columbia, from the Prairies, from all over. And we want to take a couple of uh, highlights from that first period and go right to the first goal of the hockey game, which came with quite uh, a shocking surprise to the Los Angeles fans as Ronnie Ellis scored off the faceoff from Darrell Sittler at 1-12 of the first period. Sittler won the draw. Ronnie Ellis was standing off to the side and he swatted at the puck and it really wasn't a hard shot, as you can see, but somehow that lob got in behind Rogie Vashon. That kind of put the Leafs right in front off the bat and the uh, LA Kings had all kinds of difficulty coming back after that first goal. 
And there's a goal by Jimmy Jones. Uh, sandwiched in between was won by Lanny McDonald, but there Jimmy Jones got well in behind the Kings defense. Boutet and Salming drew assists on that goal at 15-29. And you know, it wasn't so many years ago that uh, one noted coach says there's no way that Jimmy Jones will ever make it to the National Hockey League. Well, here he is completing a great season with the Leafs in a penalty-killing role and starting to score offensively here in the preliminary round against the Los Angeles King and having a big night again against the Kings here at the Forum tonight. So the teams, one of them at least, the Kings back on the ice now. So we'll go to Bill Hewitt now and a summary to this point in the action. Thank you, Brian. And uh, the Leafs will be out shortly. And there are the scoring plays. They all happened back in the first period at 112 Ellis from Sittler. McDonald at 1038 from Sittler. And at 15:29, Jones from Salming and Boutet. Toronto outshot the Kings 11-6 in the first period, but the Kings outshot the Leafs in a scoreless second period, 7-3. That the Leafs were playing strictly defensive hockey in the second period, looking for opportunities. And there's the next game Saturday, if necessary, Los Angeles at Toronto. Eastern Standard Time, and if that game is not necessary, and at the moment it doesn't look like it might be, then we'll go to the Rangers at Buffalo game. That'll be the deciding game in their preliminary series as the Rangers won in overtime tonight. Don Murdoch scored, and the oddity of that game, aside from the action on the ice, was the baby that was born at Madison Square Garden. That's a first. And the other action, Detroit, advanced to the quarterfinals, defeating Atlanta 3-2. And Philadelphia advanced by ousting Colorado. We've just got a look at Rogie Vash on. There's Mike Palmatier. There's his record this season and against the Kings lifetime. They got a good one when they discovered this young fellow, Mike Palmatier, 24 years old. Butler gives him a whack on the bat. So does Tiger Williams. And the third period is just about to begin here at the Los Angeles Forum. Okay, Brian, and Jimmy Jones will start at center ice. Jerry Butler and Pat Boutet, we have to, uh, I think, make a comment about Stan Weir going into the penalty box. <laughs> oh, I, that's a real oddity. I've never seen that. And particularly disappear. All set to go now. The puck is dropped. We're into the third period. The Leafs have a 3 nothing lead, and Darrell Edisfran fires the puck into the corner. Ryan Glennie just knocks it out to center ice. Right. Randy Maneri, over to Darrell Edisfran. Up on the wing. Goes over, shot off the glass, back out over the blue line by Jimmy Jones. Jerry Butler trying to get the puck free. Too well covered. The puck goes over on the right wing, over the line for Goldup. Goldup got away from Boris Selving, passed it right onto the stick of Pat Boutet. Pat Boutet, back to Glenny. Glenny just shoots it out for Jimmy Jones. Pat Boutet gets it again to Glenny, over for Jerry Butler. Goes back to Edestrand. Edestrand flips the puck in and goes to the corner. Brian Glenny around on the board. Jerry Butler, Jimmy Jones. Jones has it. Shot it to the left wing. Pat Boutet going after it. Boya Salmi cruising around. Knocked the puck in behind the net. That's uh, leaving it there for Randy Maneri. Maneri gets it up on the right side to put Goring. Goring at center. Up over the blue line. Try to center it. He did. Balmatier gloves that. Holds onto it. And we'll have a face-off in the lead zone to the left. Salming at the bench having another big night. It's looking back, you know, the Leafs lost their five road games, their last five in the regular season. And now looking at their playoff record, they've won four of their last five going back to last year. Sittler lost the draw, but the puck went away from Mike Murphy all the way down the ice to the blue line. Sergeant gave it to Lane McDonald and he let go. Shot down the ice by the King. Ian Turnbull goes back for it. Shot off the boards for Lanny McDonald. Out to Sittler. Sittler going down the ice, over the line. A pass back to Ian Turnbull. Turnbull into the corner. Pass it out in front. Sittler shot it right in the net. Maloney from behind the net. And it's covered there by Gary Sargent. Dan Maloney, a former king, a former Red Wing, now at Toronto Maple Leaf. 
skate repair work, taking the edge off the blade. That's uh, Gunnar Kinnear, the lead trainer. Salmon looks placidly on. The puck is shot into the corner. Danny Maloney rolls the puck in the corner. Murdoch trying to stop from there. Darrell Sittler's there as well, but they get their skate on it. Play is called. You can't help but wonder, Bill, if Ron Stewart is coaching his last period behind the bench of the Kings. Jack King Cook might call in any day now. Darrell Sittler was checked by Vashon. It's cleared up on the right wing. Murphy can't get anywhere as Maloney stepped into him. Sittler is knocked down. Maloney's there as well. And the Leafs are just out muscling. They, uh, They're in command all the way. But hockey's a funny game. From the fabulous forum in Los Angeles, this is Stanley Cup 78. A year ago, we introduced Ford's protective vinyl coating to reduce paint damage caused by stone chipping. This year, we've extended its use from behind the wheel openings here and here to this portion along the lower body side area. So now there's even more protection from stone chipping. Vinyl coating is only one of seven steps in Ford of Canada's DuraGuard system of anti-rust processes. At Ford, we're committed to quality, reliability, and durability. And to you. Ready to go for the face-off. The puck is dropped. Sittler gets it back to Turnbull. Ian Turnbull is shot. That's deflected wider than that. The rebound up on the board to Tommy Williams. He overskates it, but shoots it in anyway. Turnbull after it. Murphy couldn't get near it. And it's Dan Maloney handing it to Murphy. And then Maloney checks him again. Out to Lanny McDonald at center. Shoots the puck in. Round on the boards it comes. Maloney keeps it in to Sittler. Sittler. Trying to set up Maloney. Maloney gets it back to the blue line. Hopped over Turnbull's stick. Lanny McDonald goes back to get it. Over to Gloria Salmon. To Darrell Sittler to Ian Turnbull. He just shoots the puck in off the glass, goes behind the net. The Leafs are changing on the fly. And it's up the ice for Darrell Ennisbrand. He overskates it the first time, then he gets it over the line to Wilson. Wilson and Williams is poked to the blue line offside. And it'll come outside. 16.55 remaining in regulation time. And a look at what happened earlier tonight. The Rangers over Buffalo 4-3. They'll have a deciding game Saturday night. Detroit ousted Atlanta with a three-through victory, and Philadelphia put Colorado on the sidelines. Three to one. It's over the blue line. Stan Weir has it. Stan Weir up at center. Shot the puck in into the corner. Picked up by Edis Brad. Covered by Ellis. Went down. Gloria Salmon keeps it in with a shot. Oh, oh. Nice on gloves back. Turnbull gets a sip of water. Bruce Boudreau, as you know, has a cracked shoulder bone. He's missing tonight. Ron Wilson out for the season with a bad knee. Randy Carlisle is recovering from a severe leg cut, and he began skating just this week. And there's Gordy McRae, no room on the end of the bench. On the faceoff, the puck goes down the ice. Back forward is Boria Salmi. He hit the line, but cleared out to center right. Stan Weir couldn't get to it at a strand. Is checked, and it's Randy Maneri bringing it up. Offside again, Wilson this time, number eight. And the faceoff comes outside. Close look at the left ear of Roger Nielsen. Uh, he was saying the other day, it's uh, hard to come up with two hard-hitting games in a row. And of course, it's always hard to avoid penalties on the road. Well, the Leafs did hit hard tonight, but they don't seem to have much need for hard hitting at the moment. I think they're just trying to protect this margin. They've been a strong club defensively all season. 16-21 to play. Harry Sargent shoots the puck into the corner of Leaf territory. Back there is Turnbull again, off the board for Butler. He's jammed against the boards, and play ends there. Jimmy Jones, Boutet, and Butler. Reminder again, the Toronto Blue Jays play the Detroit Tigers and the Montreal Expos take on the Mets to open a new season of Major League Baseball on CBC TV tomorrow. Check your local listings for game and time in your area. Major League Baseball 78 on CBC Friday. Marcel Dion out there. 
that Jimmy Jones has really been covering him. Goes to Pat Boutet. Pat Boutet just flips it out down the ice. Bob Murdoch has to go back for it. Murdoch in front of his own net. Passes over to Gary Sargent. Sargent having difficulty. Back to Murdoch. Murdoch gets it up to Goldup. Goldup shot it in. Stop. Thomas here got a piece of it, but not all of it. It comes out to Jimmy Jones. He flips it out. Pat Boutet goes after it. And it's cleared by Murdoch to Dion. Jimmy Jones is right there. Now Goldup is checked by Boutet. Ian Turnbull is dumped. There's going to be a tripping penalty there to Goldup. And the Leafs will have a man advantage. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the fabulous forum in Los Angeles. Introducing the food machine, new from GE. Slices carrots, shreds cabbage, grates cheese, chops onions, and grinds beef in just seconds. Set to pulse action for necessary precise control. Continuous action for longer cycles. The food machine, new from Canadian General Electric. It works fast, and that's good. It's easy to clean, and that's great. Available at most department stores, including Eaton, Simpson, Sears, and the Bay. Ask for a demonstration. So and we're ready to go now. On the face off, the Leafs with a man advantage. The puck shot over that blue line, and it's picked up there by number six, Rob Palmer. Out to center, then it's Daryl Sittler with it. Sittler now to Lanny McDonald. They're closing over the line. He's got it around behind the net. Maloney has it in the corner. Maloney goes down. Sittler trying to dig the puck out. Lanny McDonald to Maloney. Maloney to Sittler. Back it comes to Ian Turnbull. Turnbull tried to pass. Tempkowski couldn't get it out. Lanny McDonald. For Boya Salman. Knocked it into the corner. Cleared behind the net. Picked up there by Maloney. Maloney back to Boya Salman. Comes the shot. That hit. Sam Kowski goes up into the crowd. This weekend, CBC Saturday Sports Special features the Canadian Pro West and World Cup Freestyle Skiing Championships from Vernon, B.C. And also the Canadian Cross Country Skiing Championships from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. And Sweet Lou from the Sioux, Lou Nanny, says they'll probably go right by his old front door at the far end of town. 14 minutes, 47 seconds remaining in regulation time. 3-0 for the Maple Leafs. Gloria Salming over to Turnbull. Turnbull takes his shot. It's right in front. Bashan's got it. Maloney's right there. That Bashan holds it up. Brogy Bashan, number 30. And he hasn't had that much work, but the Leafs have just been whistling around there all night long. Sittler, Maloney, and Lanny McDonald, Turnbull, and Boya Salman as they do a little repair work. Well, that's right down in uh, Rogie's goal crease, and now it seems to be all taken care of. Claude Bouchard, one of the linesmen tonight, Neil Armstrong, the other. Neil says he'd like to stay with hockey in some capacity after his days as the linesmen are over. Puck is shot to the blue line and down the ice by L.A. Going back for it for you, Salme. Salme behind the net. That's to come out with Sittler on his right. Maloney's on the left. So is Lenny McDonald on the right side. And Boya Salme elects to shoot it in. Goes in behind the net. Back uh, left it there. Cleared off the board. Sittler gets it for Maloney. And it came out. Bashan grabs it. And holds on to it. Maloney holding on to the top crossbar to make sure he doesn't do any damage to Rogi Vashon. Being jammed there by Murdoch. Rogi likes to watch the afternoon quiz shows on uh, television the day of a game. It kind of puts him in a relaxed frame of mind uh, he likes to have prior to a contest. Hitler to Lanny McDonald. Lanny McDonald, number seven, into the corner. Harry Sargent, then for Stankowski. Daryl Sittler 
Deboria Salming. Salming takes his shot. Bad John stopped that. The rebound to Sittler. Oh, and he shot it by the open side of the net. He tried to get the top corner. Lanny McDonald gave the puck away and it shot down the ice. Darrell Sittler trying for the top right hand corner and just missed. Deboria Salming with eight seconds left in the penalty. To Golda. Gloria Salming at his own blue line. Up at center to Sittler. To Jack Balakat. Balakat to Lenny McDonald. And he backhanded it wide. Balakat. Still has it. Cleared it into the corner again. Gold up his back out. The puck is shot inside the net. Murdoch drives it out over the blue line to center right. Mike Pellick took a shot. That hit bounces off Murdoch's stick. Now he comes to center right. Long shot. Almatier stopped that. Boy, it sounds went to the board. They want a face off and they get it. This is Stanley Cup 78 from the Fabulous Forum in Los Angeles. You get a lot of luck with every lotto, but with Atlantic Lotto. We won a thousand dollars, we're rich. That's all I can keep thinking, we're rich. You get a lot of luck with every lotto, but with Atlantic Lotto. I won $25,000, and she kept saying, Mom, you're crazy. Get a lot of luck with every lotto, but with Atlantic Lotto. Well, this is our location in the broadcast booth here in the forum, right behind us. A lot of the reporters from Toronto, uh, Richard Proctor back there, Milt Donnell, Frank Orr, John Iaboni. And here we go. And from the face off, the puck at the blue line, but not out. Kept in by Dion. Dion trying to get the puck. Dion hit that one off the post on the outside. Marcel Dion again with the puck. He's checked. It comes out over the line, and Jerry Butler at center. Just the puck into the corner with 12 minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the third period. It goes to Jerry Butler. Butler jammed against the board. Still has the puck for Jimmy Jones. And it's knocked out to Danny Grant to Goldup. Goldup comes down the ice. Trying to get around Turnbull. Still has the puck. Center to great shot and shot is wide by Danny Grant. Pat Boutet pokes it to the blue line, but not out. Kept in by Goldup, but it went over the glass into the crowd. Marcel Dion just has not been able to get untracked in this series. And there's Jones, the man who has made sure he hasn't been able to do much damage. Jimmy Jones, Dion with 11 career playoff goals, but stymied so far and goes off to the bench. Very disappointed in what's happening to him personally and to the Kings as a team. And they've slowed down in their skating. And also their, their hitting is ragged now. It looks like there's a beaten hockey club. Here's a shot by Murdoch, grabbed by Mike Palmatier. Certainly the key to this series so far has been the ability of Jimmy Jones to not only kill penalties, but also take care of Marcel Dion. I think Hitler, Sittler's uh, hitting, too, right in the very first minutes of play in the game Tuesday night was a key factor. I shouldn't just single out Sittler because all of them came out That's right. starched. It comes back to the blue line. Murdoch shot it into the corner. Half centered it, but Stan Weir has it. Shot it out and down the left wing. Going back for it is Bob Murdoch. Murdoch, a pass off the board. Chopped Glenny. It was outside, and you saw the Leaf players that were trapped. So we'll have a face-off outside the L.A. blue line. Well, it's always dangerous, of course, to concede a game with over half a period to play any hockey game because, you know, you know and I know we've seen a lot of scoring done in a short time, but... Just from appearances, it, it looks like the Kings are a beaten hockey club. They need a goal to stir them up. They trail by three with 11 minutes and 46 seconds. Williams waits for his teammates to get on side, shoots it in. It's back of the Kings goal. Gary Sargent, number 22, shoots it up on the right wing. Apps gets it over to Sargent. Gary Sargent to center. Brings it over the line, gets his shot. Palmatier stops that. The rebound, Ron Ellis. Into Glenny and to Williams and to Boreas Salming. Salming then gets it up to Ellis. 
Ellis, a long pass to Williams at center over the blue line, a pass back for Stan Weir, and it's left at center right. Three Kings had a chance at it. Boria Salming is dumped, comes out over the blue line, Stan Weir gets that. Stan Weir now a pass to Williams, he's over the line. Williams throws the game with Weir, and Weir just missed it. Back for the Kings, Highland Monahan down the right wing, over the line. Glenny steps into him. Gloria Salming goes to the board. It comes loose. Back to Palmer. There's his shot. Palmer stopped that. Gloria Salming around for Lanny McDonald. Stopped by Edisfran. His shot is right in front of the leaf net, and Glenny just fires it down the ice. Lanny McDonald going after it. Yes, he did! As Palmer got there first and touched it, and we have icing. With the score, Toronto Maple Leafs three, Los Angeles Kings nothing. This is Stanley Cup 78. Is a mutual when other people's lives become as important as your own, it counts to be counted on. And more and more women are buying the most unselfish thing they'll ever buy, life insurance. A mutual life agent not only knows life insurance, he knows that life is a mutual affair. Ready to face off, Butch Goring against Daryl Sittler. The puck in front of the net taken by Trevor Johansson behind the goal. In the corner. Shot it along the boards, but not out. Edisfran kept it in. Daryl Edisfran gets the shot, and he fired it wide. Danny Maloney coming out now for the lead. Lost it. Trevor Johansson flipped it up to Lanny McDonald. Lanny McDonald and Turnbull shot in by Lanny McDonald, but Sittler was inside the blue line. Nine minutes, 59 seconds remaining in the third period. Toronto three, the Kings nothing. Bill, I think that face guard protecting the nose of Lanny McDonald has bothered him tonight. He's had two or three missed shots, shots you'd normally see him whistle at the goal, have slipped off the end of his stick, and perhaps just sneaking a look down at the puck, and through those bars, he's, uh, he's missed the opportunity. Lanny McDonald along the boards now. He holds it right there at the Kings bench. Butch Goring with Mike Murphy on the right side and Mike Williams on the left. Hammer and Edison with the two defensemen, Sittler, Maloney, and Lanny McDonald as Sittler drives the puck in. Ashon out of the net, lets it go. Edison gets it behind the net. Over to the far wing and Butch Goring, number 19, coming to center right, over the red line, up to the leap blue line, a good burst of speed, but he lost it there, and Maloney heads back. Maloney down the right wing, gets it over the line, into the corner. Sittler covers his man, but Murphy comes up with the puck. Murphy, a long pass for Williams. He hit Maloney. Over the line for Murphy. Trevor Johansson tried to cover him. Murphy still fights for it. Got it over onto the right side. Palmer gets his shot. Sittler goes down. The puck's in front. The shot. Not by Palmer. Goes to Maloney. And he just shoots it down the ice. That Sittler took a real header into the board. Back to get it. And Sergeant and Icing called against the Maple Leafs. This Stanley Cup playoff is coming to you from the fabulous Forum in Los Angeles. Introducing the patented Mark Collar from Arrow. Revolutionary. And that's fact. It's the first collar ever shaped to fit the human neck. Until now, men's collars have been cut like a tube. The Mark's ingenious shaping is like a cone. Result? A comfort like you've never experienced before. A new crisp look with the neckband out of sight. The patented Mark Collar. Only by Arrow. Neil Armstrong, ready to drop the puck, he does. Jimmy Jones had it, Dennis Marcel Dion covered by Pellick. Low left, trying to center it, still has the puck. Goes behind the net, low left, still with it. Trying to get it out in front, he did the Murdoch, a shot. Another shot, and that one by Dion, hit the goalpost. 
Los Angeles King trying desperately to get on the score sheet. Gold up to the young. And it's cleared by Boria Selming down off Murdoch. There's no icing call. Gary Sargent going to the boards with Pat Boutet. Picked up by Murdoch. Murdoch shot it off the boards at the center ice. Marcel Dion. Jimmy Jones is there. Mike Pellick into the corner. John knocked him off the puck. Jimmy Jones. Grabbed by Goldup. The puck ends up. Palmatier lets it go to Mike Pellick. Pellick. Off the boards for Pat Boutet. A long shot for Jerry Butler into the corner. Butler is hit high by Randy Maneri. Sent it right into the goal mall. And a charging penalty is headed out as Randy Maneri slams Jerry Butler into the board. And so he'll get a penalty. Butler was racing down there. Gold up 21 was also involved in. Boy, you saw that glass bounce back about eight feet, it seemed. Yeah, Goldep was the first one in. Live from the fabulous Forum in Los Angeles, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Introducing 15,000 miles of protection, 15,000 miles between oil changes. In one test, cars with new STP motor oil were run to simulate stop and go and highway driving. After 15,000 miles, each engine was pulled and inspected. The results, clean parts and virtually no wear. Protection for 15,000 miles. New STP motor oil, that's extra protection. At participating outlets of these stores, uh, replay. Here's Butler coming in to collect that puck which bounced high up on the boards and now Goldup comes in and look out Jerry. Oh boy they sprang back. That's where the uh, Zamboni comes out and uh, the boards may be a little looser there than they are around the rest of the rink. So Goldup goes for charging at 12-10. They've got to fix the, the boards down there. No wonder. Butler uh, was lucky not to be injured on that. No, well, because the boards did give. Well, they might have all summer to fix them. While we have this delay, a reminder again that uh, if a third game is necessary in this series, we've got 750 to play. It'll be played at Toronto Saturday night. Eight o'clock Eastern time, but more than likely it'll be Rangers at Buffalo Saturday night game three of that important series the only preliminary series that may be still going by Saturday night Rangers coming through in overtime over the Buffalo Sabres tonight Pete Stemkowski looking on the 14 year veteran of the NHL number 11. Final scores again of the action earlier tonight. Rangers over Buffalo, 4-3 to three in overtime. Murdoch scored. Detroit over Atlanta, 3-2. to two. Atlanta's out. Philadelphia came through late in the game, 3-1 to one over Colorado. And the Rockies are sidelined. And the Leafs with a 3-0 lead in 7 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the third period and a man advantage. That's the puck in the corner. They hold it there. Peter Stamkowski, number 11. And they'll face off in the circle. To the left of Rogi Bashaw. Dan Weir, Williams, Ellis, Gloria Salming, and Ian Turnbull. And the face on it comes back to Salming from Williams. And to Ron Ellis. Back to Salming. Puck up on the wing, but not out. Kept in. Danny Grant lost it. Jerry Butler tried to get out. Still has the puck to Jimmy Jones. Gets it up at center. Murdoch took him out and gold up. A pass for Grant, who's bumped. And Mike Pelling and gold up bump against the board. Grant is knocked off the puck, and Jerry Butler has it. Gary Butler up at center right, over the red line. With Jimmy Jones, offside. Over there. 
three points for Daryl Settler tonight gives him 45 playoff points. He has 17 goals now, and here he is. Oh, a good shot of it there as he moved right in front, and traffic got in front of Rogi Vashon as well. Doesn't say much for the Kings when two of their best players are Taylor Edisrand, one a rookie and one a longtime veteran. Puck shot back into Leaf territory. Mike Pellick going back for it. Finds the net into the corner. 5-12 remaining. It goes into the corner to Glenny. Up on the left wing to Pat Boutet. To Jimmy Jones. Up at center. Shot the puck in. Back to the net for Danny Grant. Grant number 15 coming up now for the King. Just gets rid of it at center right. Jimmy Jones is there. Jones. A pass for Boutet. That uh, knocks it off the board. The Leafs are changing on the go. Kings with Wilson coming up the center. Williams goes after him. Took him to the board. Ian Turnbull then shoots it down the ice. And that'll be icing. Darrell Ennis ran touching it. 4.28 in regulation time remaining. Round of Maple Leafs, four. Kings, nothing. Well, I understand we're having some video and audio problems down the line, and we regret that, but I guess they've been all cleared up now, and we're back full strength. Okay, Brad and Ian Turnbull fails to get the puck out. Here's a chance for the Kings to pass back. That is Brad. He shot it wide. Palmateers down. The puck comes around on the boards, and Williams gets it out to center right. Ian Edisbrand. The puck at the blue line. And they call it offside, but... They say there's a rodeo coming here soon, and Tiger <laughs> Williams, I guess, wants to get into the act. Well, I don't know whether it's a rodeo or a game of leapfrog. If so, Williams didn't complete the leap. George Ferguson with... Williams and Valakit. Kings Darrell Ettis ran to Apps over to Randy Maneri. Maneri took his shot. Palmateer tipped that off to the wing. Trevor Johansson to George Ferguson. Got it out at center right. Williams being watched by Apps. Apps and Maneri. Ferguson trying to stop Wilson. Wilson comes up the center. Shot it in. Palmateer out of the net. Hooks into the corner. A shot. Palmateer stops that. Gets a hold of it. And holds on. With three minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the third period. Williams takes a shove at Wilson. For slapping at the puck in front of Palmateer. Wilson from Shelburne, Ontario. Likes to get up there to the farm in the summertime, and he's a big, strong customer, and Wilson and Williams have tangled several times over the course of the regular season. Now we're down to 3.39 to play. Leafs in front four to nothing, and that score is even flattering to the Kings because in that first period the red light went on twice one the puck stayed right on the line a second goal was disallowed with Boutet in the crease and they missed two or three other good scoring chances Lenny McDonald on a breakaway Butler on a breakaway Weir back to the net for Ian Turnbull Turnbull off the boards past Maloney down the ice waved off there's no icing call as very Sergeant over escapes the puck. Sergeant goes to the boards. Lanny McDonald, Dan Maloney. Maloney lost it to Murphy. Murphy gets it up to Tommy Williams. Williams at center to the leaf line. Trying to go around Johansson. Palmateer comes out. Lanny McDonald just shoots it out and down the ice. That's going to go over the red line. And it'll be brought back for icing. Palmateer, three minutes and one second away from you know what. And the faceoff coming back to the corner circle to his right. Hitler facing off against Butch Goring. He wants Tommy Williams over next to Lanny McDonald. 
Doreen wanting a draw. Lanny McDonald tried to get to it. Sergeant took a shot. Thomas here kicked at it. Mahoney runs into his check, and Mike Pellick flips it out and down the ice. Back forward is Sergeant. Sergeant, a pass to Williams. Back to Sergeant. Back to Williams. Stopped by Lanny McDonald. Knocked it into the corner. Back there for it is Bob Murdoch. Murdoch coming out to the blue line. With check. Darrell Sutton really get loose. Back up for Murdoch over the line with Williams. Tommy Williams has shot. Thomas here stopped that. It's cleared again out and down the ice. Going back for it is Murdoch. Two minutes, 22 and counting. Wade Perry at 4 0 for the Maple Leafs. Darrell Littlestrand. Look out! Up and Williams nearly gets nailed by Jerry Butler. Who caught him with his head down. Down, Pat Boutet. Gregoria Salmon. Salmon. Back into the corner. Pellick up for Boutet. Pat Boutet. Coming up to center. Chop the puck in. Going back for it. Touching it. Icing is the call. Boutet didn't wait till he crossed the red line. Now we're down to a minute 56 on the clock. And a reminder again that it'll be the Rangers at Buffalo in game three of that preliminary series. The Rangers tying it up tonight with an overtime score. Eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time from Buffalo. Watch for it on Hockey Night in Canada. And the Leafs will get a well-deserved rest for the hang on here with a minute 56 seconds before they open up their next series. Back of the net for Mike Pellick. Kelly takes a look. A pass for Boutet. That's going down the ice. That'll be icing, too, but the seconds keep ticking off. And now we're down to 140. Talking about Jack Kent Cook changing coaches, which I'm sure he will do over the summer or before very long. He has... Uh, when you talk about Jack Kent Cook, there are two rules of work. One, the boss is always right, and when the boss is wrong, refer to rule number one. Marcel Dion, all ready to go for the faceoff with Jones. The puck, Jimmy Jones with it, lost it again to Dion. Dion might have centered, he did. Comes back to Randy Maneri, a shot. Tomatier stopped that. Comes out in front, and covering up is Mike Palmatier. And he has a minute and 26 seconds remaining to go in this third period. Boy, Palmatier plays against the Kings. I wonder why he didn't win the Vezina. And he's really battling now to protect the 4-0 score. It's to Mike Pellick. Pellick is knocked down. The puck ends up in the corner. Boreas Salming. He goes back of the net and stops. Salming. Over to Mike Pellick. Pellick flips it out to center. Randy Maneri's pass. Stopped by Jimmy Jones. Shoots the puck in. One minute to go. As the fans cheer. 55 seconds. Marcel Dion up to center. Shot the puck, it hit Mike Pellick, it's cleared right back out again. Dion gets it back to Randy Maneri. 45 seconds, long shot. Off the board to Dion. Dion trying to get it in front. Gold up has it. Gets it back to the blue line to Murdoch. Murdoch shot, and it's picked off by Mike Pellick. Pellick coming up with Ellis. And Pellick just flips it into the corner with 36 seconds. Ellis up for checking. Police all standing up at their bench. 21 seconds. The puck at center ice. Trevor Johansson shot it back. Now it's Gary Sargent with 15 seconds. And it's tipped back by Ian Turnbull. Now we have 10. All the lead players are jammed up at the bench. It's over the line. Three seconds into the corner. The horn goes. And Mike Thomas here has the shutout. Palmatier shuts them out, four to nothing. The Leafs advance to the quarterfinals in somewhat easy fashion, eliminating the Los Angeles Kings, who were greeted by a chorus of boos and catcalls in the last few seconds of this game. There 
first Captain Darrell Sittler, who was a big man in this game tonight. The Leafs as a team performed admirably against the Kings, not only here tonight, but back in Toronto in the first game. And that's what really starts the Kings, that opener at Toronto, 7-3. to three. And now the Kings line up and the teams shake hands. Kings congratulating the Leafs, wishing them well in the series or series that lie ahead. I imagine Rogi Vashon might send another cigar over to Mike Palmatier after this one tonight. He did that earlier this year when Palmatier shut out the Kings during the regular season. Maybe quite an overhaul on the Los Angeles Kings before another season rolls around. Right now they skate off very dejectedly to their dressing room. Rogi Vashon gives his goal stick away. In just a moment, our three star selection. Cheddar cheese from Ontario, world famous yet becoming extinct. Why? The biggest single problem in the cheddar cheese industry in Ontario now is the shortage of milk. And it's quite possible that if this situation isn't changed in the very near future, that factories such as ours, single purpose cheddar cheese factories, could very well become extinct. Watch Country Canada cheesed off Sunday at 1.30. When you're smiling, when you're smiling. Hello, here's a double album produced especially for you. 100 Golden Greats, listen. You need hands to hold someone you care for. I'm forever blowing bubble Cause there's a tavern in the town. Great songs, eh? This super album is in the stores now. Two records set, $9.99, two tapes set, $11.99. Well, a very quiet crowd uh, walking out of the forum here in Los Angeles, very disappointed in the performance of the Kings. They had high hopes for this team. They had some big players in Marcel Dion and Butch Goring, but the Leafs just walked all over them, skated all over them in both games of this series, starting with the opener at Toronto the other night. And here tonight, it was Ron Ellis starting things off with the first goal from Sittler. Sittler winning most of his face-offs tonight, and that triggered the three goal uprising by the Leafs in the first period then McDonald got the second goal also from Sittler also with Sittler a big man on the faceoffs then Jimmy Jones and he's the underdog I guess everybody's little hero in this series he came through with his first goal of the playoffs his first goal of any playoffs from Boutet and Salming and the three goal margin was uh, quite a quite a margin for the Leafs as they uh, dominated the play in the second they eased off a little bit from uh, an offensive standpoint and left it to the defense to take over got only three shots on goal in the second and Darrell Sittler who is really the kingpin of this hockey club all season got his first of the playoffs from Turnbull at 13 15 and Paul Matier scored the shutout he had a big night in goal the three star Sittler Jones and Salming and now let's go downstairs to Dave Hodge well, no doubt, uh, this series has been the highlight of Jimmy Jones' professional hockey career. Star number two in the opening game with a pair of assists and a great shadowing job on Marcel Dion. First NHL playoff goal tonight for Jim Jones. Uh, again, doing a great job on Dion and again the second star. Uh, maybe I've said it all, but your reaction to what you've been through uh, the past three nights? Well, I'm very thrilled. Uh, I think the best is uh, yet to come, I hope. And, uh, you know, the team's been playing well, and uh, I just hope everything just keeps going. Jim, did you expect uh, the job you did on Dion to be done as well, or perhaps did you think it would be as easy as it was because uh, Dion was never a factor in the series, never even uh, on a shift did you think that Dion was the player that scored 53 goals last year and 36 this year? Well, uh, I don't know. The Kings just seemed to lack a little punch. I don't really know what the reason is. Uh, you know, I don't know. I think it was part of the reason that we were on top of them a, a great deal, and we were really hustling, and we were very alert, and I was just, you know, happy the way things went. The face-off margin by the Leafs tonight, we don't have it in numbers, but uh, certainly for the first three goals, yours included, face-offs were the biggest reason for it. Uh, did you feel as though this could be a very important factor in the series, and uh, was that on your mind coming into the game? Well, we're, we've been working on face-offs hard all year. Uh, you know, we keep face-offs. Uh, Roger keeps face-offs of every game, and, uh, you know, he thinks it's a very important part of the game, and we've been working very hard, and it just, you know, happened to pay off tonight, and just hope it keeps paying off. You had lots of time to make the move on the goal, uh, and uh, Rogi Vashon really didn't have much to do. 
on the play, but were you surprised that uh, nobody was checking you? Well, I was very fortunate. I, I got in the, in the open and nobody was near me, and I had a lot of room to make my move. Uh, it was a rebound, and the puck was laying there, and Rogie couldn't move. Jim, now that the Leafs are in the quarterfinals, uh, there are two possibilities, New York Islanders or the Philadelphia Flyers. Have you got any sort of thoughts as to which team you might like to meet? I don't think uh, the guys have any preference whatsoever. You know, when uh, we're heading into this series, everybody was asking whether it was, you know, Detroit or, or L.A. Or, or the Rangers, and I don't think, you know, we have really any preference. Uh, Philly and uh, the Islanders are both very good teams. The sounds from the dressing room, especially going into the dressing room, uh, suggested a lot of joy. Uh, perhaps it was a, a series that the least figured to win, so you might be surprised that uh, they're as happy as they are in sweeping the Islanders so decisively. But I wonder whether this is a reaction to what was building up towards the end of the regular season. Well, we hadn't been going well the last month. We lost uh, 10 of 12, and, you know, we were down, and we were struggling. The, the press in Toronto were on us, and uh, we weren't playing good hockey. And uh, everybody was just saying, you know, wait till the playoffs. We're, we're going to, you know, go when the money's on the line. And, you know, and, you know, I think all the players believed it, but nobody else did, you know. So just, I wouldn't uh, say nobody, but uh, <laughs> th there were some doubts, certainly. Talking about face-offs, talking about your goal, if we can uh, look down here and see how it was scored, it's uh, kind of an indication of what was going on tonight. Could you take us through this? Well, Burry uh, got a good low shot away. And uh, like I said earlier, the rebound just laid there and Rogie couldn't move. And I was given lots of room and... It's fortunate to get to my back end. Well, Jim, congratulations on another great game. I'm sure all Leaf fans are very, very happy for the team and uh, for yourself uh, specifically with a great series, and good luck against the Islanders of the Flyers. Thank you very much. Jimmy Jones, star number two tonight with Daryl Sittler scoring a goal and two assists, being named star number one. Boria Salming was star number three. We'll have our final wrap-up in uh, just a moment. The final score, the Maple Leafs four and the Los Angeles Kings nothing. Edmonton this summer, the Commonwealth Games of 1978. People from around the world getting together to bring harmony through sport. CBC will be there to bring it all to you. August of 78, the 11th Commonwealth Games on CBC. Got spirit, got spirit now. Got spirit, got spirit now. CBC Sunday. There's excitement and adventure for all the family Sunday night when Bruno Jerusi stars as log salvager Nick Adonidas on The Beachcombers. Set in the rugged beauty of Canada's West Coast, be sure to watch and enjoy The Beachcombers, Sunday night at 7 on CBC. We should say a word about Roger Nielsen, who entered his first year in the NHL this season. Uh, nobody quite knew what to expect, but he was well organized, well prepared for every game, and the same held through for the playoffs. His game plan worked to perfection, starting in the opener in Toronto the other night, and it wound up for him uh, taking his team on to the quarterfinals after the 4 nothing win over the uh, Los Angeles Kings here at the Fabulous Forum. We should take one more look at that goal by Daryl Sittler that wrapped it up, gave the Leafs the fourth uh, score from Turnbull, a power play goal, and Daryl Sittler's uh, just enjoying a fantastic season for the Leafs this year, and notice how alertly he moved out in front of Rogi Vashaw, spotted the opening, and that just crushed the Kings. It made it four to nothing for the Leafs, and the three stars again, Sittler number one, Jones number two, Salming number three. It'll be the Islanders or the Flyers for the Leafs in the quarterfinals, and Saturday night, don't forget, New York at Buffalo, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and let's go back now to Dave Hodge. Well, Lou, let's uh, talk about the Leafs in the next series. Uh, what would you think, considering the fact that they beat the Flyers three times out of four and did not win the season series against the Islanders? Is, is there a significant advantage for the Leafs if they can play Philadelphia? Well, I would say there is, basically because they played so well last year in the playoffs. Even though the uh, Flyers were able to come back and beat them, I think that the Leafs right now are thinking that they, they lost sight of their goals late in the game and lost that series, yet they've got to feel very confident. Secondly, uh, when you look at the Islander team, you know that they're coming off a championship year in their division. They're a strong team. They are probably more physical than the Flyers right now. And, and I would say that uh, you'd rather face a team that is coming in with less momentum, a team that all of a sudden uh, 
maybe is starting to look to different players for their leadership and really haven't found them yet, and so it would be an easier time for the Leafs to play the Flyers, in my estimation. Let's uh, make the point that uh, Buffalo would have to lose out to the New York Rangers for a Philadelphia-Toronto series to occur. Otherwise, it would be the Islanders and the Maple Leafs. Uh, those two teams obviously are tougher than Los Angeles, uh, but yet do you think the Leafs will continue to play just as they did in this series and uh, even if they get stronger resistance uh, hope that it produces the same results? Well the Leafs right now are conditioned to win. They know what's going to make them win. They know they've got to check. They know they've got to use their body. I feel that they're going into the series right now in, in a position that they're ready to hit any team they play. Okay that wraps it up for Los Angeles uh, for this series and the Leafs will move on to an as yet undetermined opponent. The uh, goals in the game, Ellis and Lanny McDonald, along with Jimmy Jones in the first period. Then uh, a second period that saw the Leafs get only three shots was followed by a Daryl Sittler goal in the third period that ended it up for the Leafs with a 4 to nothing victory. And on Saturday night, we will show you uh, the game that will determine the Leafs' quarterfinal opponent as the New York Rangers are at Buffalo. Good night from California.